Hello and welcome to Super Basement Bros, episode 11. I'm joined by my co-hosts Tanner and Hasten. Woo! Oh, hello! I'm, I'm Connor, by the way. I totally forgot to skip my name. <laughs> I'm joined by Hasten and Tanner. And Joseph. 11 episodes in, who are you? <laughs> um, we got a lot of news for you guys this week and an exciting episode ahead. Uh, if you didn't know, uh, Super Basement Bros is a podcast dedicated to the world of entertainment. Um, we love to celebrate all things involved in it, like video games, movies, theme parks, just pop culture in general. That's... Um, that's our speciality in this uh, podcast. Uh, some of the news we got for you guys this week is... Um, uh, social media. Oh, social media. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I was like, I what was do like, you say? I was what? like, social media is the news this week. <laughs> um, yeah, so we have Instagram, of course, just at Super Basement Bros, and then a Twitter at Super Bros Videos. Yeah. Just, go, just go check us out. I mean, we post pretty regularly on our, our Twitter. And, our and we Instagram. post whenever an episode's uploaded, mm-hmm. usually, so... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, follow us on there, and then you can keep up with exactly. Our I content. mean, you can go follow. All of us are tagged. You can. It's got links and stuff. You can just check it out. Um, and we want your guys' feedback. We want to know what you guys think we can do to improve the show, and also what topics you guys would like to see us discuss. Um, we have topics every episode, our, our big topic, and then we also go into a bunch of miniature segments. And we'd love to hear what you guys uh, want to hear us talk about, and we I mean, gladly go over. Already, it. we had uh, some people who have talk to us and we we always respond and so you can go look at examples like if you want to talk to us just say anything we don't care we'll respond you know um if only i knew what the guy's name i'd i'd say it you know but oh yeah we actually had a couple of people comment, yeah, we, which is awesome and we really appreciate that we we like the interaction because we'd like to know who thanks sawyer yeah was <laughs> one of them your friend yeah. oh yeah well we had another guy who commented who yeah, who, uh, yeah. left us a message so yeah and and we appreciate that of course so uh yeah just Interact with us, talk to us. We we'd really appreciate it. So, yeah, yeah. sweet. Um, well, to give you guys an idea of what we're to expect in this show, we're gonna have a death match at the end of the episode, like potentially, w- potentially, um, given the time. But uh, expect if we do our death match, it's going to be Coke versus Pepsi, and we're gonna specifically focus on their drinks, not uh, well, like their the, drink brands. So yeah. drink brands because Spike, if you go with right. Pepsi, like they own Frito Lay. Yeah, like so. <laughs> they own a bunch of things. All your chips basically beverages. are gone. Coke mm-hmm. owns the government, so you gotta yeah. get rid of that. So you gotta, yeah, we gotta take some things out of account. So it's gonna be strictly focused on their beverages, um, which will make the the argument a little more concise. And the answer for what we each have might surprise you. So stick around. Yeah, Let's okay. see. But I, I'm gonna. I think I might surprise myself. Stay tuned to the end of the video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we can get yeah. ad yeah. revenue. <laughs> Even though we don't have ads yet. Yeah. Or any revenue. Anyway. Uh, and then we also got new. We, we gotta make sure the video goes longer than ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think we'll hit it? Oh, I don't know. I think we're, we already hit it. Three minutes. We have to go over seven more minutes. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. We're at yeah. We literally minutes. have oh our most of our episodes. I think run average. At two least two hours. hours. At least we've two hit, hours. We've. I think one of them we actually had to cut some. We had one episode. So that was an hour because, and we had to cut some of it because most of the news was like Kevin Hart hosting the Oscars, which, it, which was like, like months day, before. Well, it was like a day later, the day after we recorded Dawson, like, and it Kevin was Hart's me and, not hosting and it was Oscars. me and Tanner yelling each, at each other about, about the, the Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You suck, Tanner. It's not the original. <laughs> yeah, I think we actually left that one in. <laughs> That oh, did we? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, because it, it's like freaking hilarious. Because you're like looking at me, and you're like, "Stop it!" I stop honest, it. I do honestly think, though, I argue we like did Trump. have an episode, or in the episode that's cut down to an hour, we did have a moment where we got heated. But and I think it was for some reason about it was the, so Marvel again. No, I think it was about Marvel again for no reason. It's because Tanner was Tanner was saying how the. Avengers is only like five characters. No, that like, one's up. That one's up. Is that that there? one is up? Because <laughs> yeah. I was talking about the we original one, yeah. movie Avengers. I was talking about the ones from the Avengers movie. Then you were like, "But the X Men are Avengers and Spider Man," and I'm like, "No." Anyway, we're getting sidetracked again. What's the- <laughs> no? Shut up, Dan. Crap. We have to go six more minutes, guys. Can we do it? Um. Anyway, yeah. So death match at the end of the episode, and we're gonna start out with some news. And our big topic for today is actually gonna be about Evermore uh, Park, which is a park here in Utah. Um, Woo! If, if you didn't know, yeah, it's actually it's really the one cool thing we have. We have. Yeah. Yes, that's <laughs> all we got here. Mormons and and also Evermore <laughs> and, and Evermore. some snow. <laughs> and snow yeah. If you didn't know what Evermore is, we're gonna talk a lot about it. It's really cool. It's supposed to be like a, a future of what theme parks can be. Yeah. It's not ride based, so it's, it's not made like by a Disney Imagineer. Yeah, and it is made by a Disney Imagineer. It, yeah. Speaking of it, it's 
in its very early stages. Yeah. Very early. Mm-hmm. We went before the park was actually even it's, built. It's not even finished. Fully, yeah. Right. The, the, about half the park was still under construction. Yeah. So it's... So they, a got, good they got a lot of plans ahead. And a lot of the uh, roads and stuff weren't even paved yeah. yet. Like, there's Which I'm a lot. excited to see it. And what we were at was... Oh really my gosh, cool. some of the stuff they had is really cool already, so well, I'm really looking forward to and what so they do. So, what it basically is, is just, instead of, like you said, a, a ride-based theme park, like Lagoon, Disneyland, you know, all those Lagoon. type of theme parks, it's Lagoon, <laughs> yeah, which is in Utah, it's more uh, the experience. Yeah, if you, you don't know what Lagoon is. <laughs> you go in and it, it's basically like morping, where you're... Being a L- different... LARPing. LARPing. <laughs> morping. It's like, it's like morping. <laughs> morping with a dance. <laughs> the is this guy Prom backwards. No. Yeah, LARPing. LARPing. Uh, it's like you're playing a video game it's, IRL. It's live action role playing. It's role live play. action role playing in a park. So picture but, you go to Disneyland and you play a character. Sora. But then again, yeah. not as... Sora. For, <laughs> not, not to be oh rude. But, goofy. <laughs> <laughs> but not to be rude, but not as nerdy to an extent because there's actually... The buildings and, and the it's characters. Nerdy. And, it is it's, it's oh, nerdy. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. you're like, yeah. If you go and you're expecting to just be like, oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> and there's. Here's what I will say. Even though it is nerdy, oh, I cool. honestly think most people aren't going to think it's like, stay away from oh, it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of people will enjoy it. If Plus, it's it. just an awesome experience. There's a lot experience. of scenery there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They have but some amazing statues. and. I think yeah. basically. It's just a fantasy experience that you go and you would literally get lost. For a while, you're kind of trying to figure out what you're supposed to do, where yeah. you're supposed to go. They need to work on that. They need to make it so it's much easier to start your quest. Yeah, because you, you kind of get in there and there's so many people that it's like... You're like, oh my where, gosh. Where am I supposed to go to start my quest? And I think right they now? did try to make it so everyone would start the quest at the same time. But mm-hmm. instead, so many people were just going past them. They were like, oh, Because there was those guys in white robes yeah. handing out the cards. And they're like, wait... <laughs> But, um, you need this card to start your quest. <laughs> yeah. Um, but shut yeah. up! I need to go find my goal. <laughs> but like we were saying, it's it's really cool. It's very Lord of the Rings esque. Yeah. It's uh, it's super cool experience. And I'd like to before we go into depth about it, I'd like to just get our first. What did we think about it? Well, hold up, real fast, because we're we're already jumping into the topic. So right. I want I want to preface we are also going to talk about news we were going to start with that but since we're already talking about evermore let's mm-hmm. just go into that we're going to jump into our topic right now which is uh evermore theme park later expect a little bit of news like xbox game pass coming to nintendo switch and also reggie uh, fils retiring from nintendo so we have a lot mm. of news coming up later but uh before we uh, we jump into what our thoughts are on Evermore, while you guys were talking just there, I wanted to look up what they're about is, like what they say Evermore okay. is, just so we can give actually what they say it is, not just our uh, making up of it. So I mean, it kind of is just what it you is. make it, though. Well, it is, I know, but this is what they say yeah, yeah. it is. Oh, yeah, I yeah. know. I was just saying. Like, so yeah. Evermore Park is an experience where guests of all ages can escape to a new realm, the fantasy village of Evermore. Themed like a European village with its own buildings, citizens, and epic story, guests interact with characters, go on quests, and become part of a world and become part of the world of Evermore. The village of Evermore is a gr- growing entity with changing themes, buildings, citizens, and quests. Um, then they go on to discuss. They have seasonal events. So um, when we went, it was their lore event, it's which is Halloween, which it was, which is Halloween basically. Then they, or no, no, it was Halloween. Yeah, it was yeah. Halloween. No, 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 I know, I'm making sure we got the right one. Lore, the yeah. King. So Lore is the Halloween one. Then in the summer, they have Mythos. And then in winter, they have Aurora. So those are their three themes. Um, for Lore, the Halloween time when we went, it says, This haunted experience comes from a Kel- uh, Celtic lore and explores the battle with darkness. And then Mythos is a magical lantern festival based in Norse mythology that celebrates the light of summer. And then Aurora is a magical winter fest with a Dickinson feel and brings uh, wonder to visitors despite the cold. So that's kind of what they have listed for their oh, um, brutal ideas. This winter. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we didn't go in there. <laughs> I am excited to go in the summer, though. I do yeah, want to that's go. a cool mythos. Yeah, the yeah. Uh, Norse mythology. So mm-hmm. that's like God of War. Heck yeah. yeah. And uh, Thor and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's really cool. It reminds me... As stupid as it sounds, almost like a video game. You know how video games have like live events where they have like, oh, a Halloween party or, mm-hmm. you know, like I like that. Like, no, not a lot of theme parks have that. I mean, sure, like Disneyland does, but you know where they actually make like a whole festival out of it, where it's like, oh, it's it's Christmas time. We've got Christmas decorations and we've got 
you know, it, it, I think it's really cool, and it does change the experience, if I'm not mistaken. Because the the time we went... I'm sure the quests will be different. Yeah, because the yeah. main guy, villain, when we went, was like a giant pumpkin dude. So it's like, I'm sure he's well, not the main villain. villain. That's the thing. Is like, oh, yeah. You don't know. You don't know. Well, but the main character was like a pumpkin. So, so I'm sure he's so not. So let's start more basic here. Let's jump in from the beginning. Like, let's start with what our first impressions were when we first yeah. walked into the park. What we That's think what Evermore was, was. So I first learned about Evermore back in like 2014, which is crazy. A long time ago. When I, was, I went Con. to uh, uh, yeah, Comic Con that year, Salt Lake Comic Con. And then also they, they had a thing called Fantasy Con they did for one year and then it disappeared because <laughs> it wasn't popular. But, but a lot uh, of freaking hobbits went. I think that's when they, <laughs> yeah, a ton of the hobbits. Did. I met like most of the hobbits yeah. and dwarves. And wasn't from uh, Lord of the Rings. Sean Astin it was before he was cast for Stranger Things, and he's like, "Please hire me or something." No, didn't he say that? <laughs> oh no, yeah, he actually yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was joking. No, I know. But yeah, but yeah he was, it was like, before he was cast as Bob. Yeah, he was in like, yeah, he's like, you got, you got, please. <laughs> he's like, you got a mo- movie I can. I haven't read. done anything since Rudy. <laughs> <laughs> before Lord of the Rings, wow. <laughs> that wasn't him in Lord of the Rings. He wasn't Sam. Nope. Oh. But. Uh, Either way, uh, at FantasyCon is when I think they first announced it, and they announced their Kickstarter for it because it was going to be all like crowdfunded and whatnot. And I remember they were like, "Oh, we're not expecting it to open for like seven, eight years or something insane like that." They were like, "We're getting it. We're going to get all the money for it. We're going to plan for it." And then it's supposed to be. They had the general idea though. They were like, "It's going to be a basically live action role playing park." Where you come in, make your own quest, your own story, your your own character. It sounded awesome. I remember being like, "This sounds crazy," and it's going to be here in Pleasant Grove, Utah. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm like, "There's no way this is going to happen." And then it went like radio silent. I feel like like all of a sudden I didn't hear about it for years until just last year, 2018, when I saw like on Facebook or something like that, I got a notification that's like, "Oh, come join us for." Uh, Evermore, it's going to be at Comic Con or whatever, and mm-hmm. we're planning a fall opening this year. And I'm like, Holy they really crap. launched out of nowhere. It came, it really did. Like all of a sudden, I was like, whoa, they actually did it. And it's been five years, so even sooner than what they were saying. It makes me wonder if they were like running low on money, and they're like, we need, we to just got to get it. We got to get something open. Part of me thinks that, and is, we'll get to that too, because yeah. uh, when we were talking about it, there was there a lot was that stuff wasn't that finished. wasn't done. Yeah, exactly. But um, when we went, uh, we went to Comic-Con earlier this year, and they were promoting it there pretty heavily, and then they gave us, like, a thing that they're like, come to the opening party mm-hmm. or whatever. And so we ended up going in October for their lore fest, and we went was with our like family. a month after they opened or so? Two I think months? probably even sooner, like, probably like three weeks. Yeah, it was quick. Because they opened, their opening day, I think, was September 8th, and then they didn't do any more there was like a one night opening party mm-hmm. was that the time we went no and then they did uh the grand opening at the very end of september and we went like second week of october which we were talking about and i we I, i'd like to bring this up we all decided towards the end that we think it would have been smarter if they had waited to open well no hasten was actually just pointing out which i actually tend to agree with him is that i think they opened it for the money. I think they oh, yeah. realized... They I, needed... Well, I think they realized we're, we don't have enough money to complete this. Let's get this open. We can make money as we go and then build it as we go. And honestly, if you think about it, it's it was actually a great comparison to the games you were making earlier because that's literally like how most games are made nowadays. They're like, let's just release it and we'll build it as we and then, go. And, and then, we'll, the then we'll sell a thing called the season pass and get all the money. Yeah, and then we'll the get game. microtransactions along yeah. the way, but which it's totally we'll like, sell actually. My, the DLC Aurora... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We'll do a, a winter event called, uh, or a summer. And you have event to buy called, the annual yeah. pass. <laughs> yeah, you buy the annual pass, and you'll be. No, set. but um, I I think I, I agree with that. But I remember if we had recommended if you wanted to go, like I they I'm glad they opened and stuff, and we got to experience it for yeah. like the hardcore people. And I'm glad we get to go. We're gonna go again. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. And it, that it's not too far. That it's like something we can just like be like, oh, you know, let's go to Evermore this weekend. Um, but I would recommend maybe even waiting, looking like, yeah, kind of staying in tune with it, looking at the news, wait until they're done because there was a lot that broke the immersion because one thing is once you get into it, you're like, I'm a knight, I'm a quest, I'm freaking, uh, Dovahkiin, you know, like whatever you're, your new character, you know, you're on your quest, but then you see like pallets and like a trailer and a tractor yeah. and you're like, yeah. this is weird. You know, and there there was a lot of like fencing, and you could tell mm-hmm. that it was. You could tell that you were you couldn't them. go through the whole park. Yeah. yeah, and like you even you would even have to like cut all the way around to go to like this one spot. 
mm-hmm. and it was really inconvenient. So I recommended like. Well, real fast, I say before we recommend anything, I do want to do our recommendations at the end. No, of I know. I, I was say. just saying like. No, no, I know. I'm just that's saying, not my recommendation now. No, no. What I'm saying is that just at, at the, the end of our conversation is yeah. when I want to say if we recommend it or not. Right. I want to go ahead and start with like when we first walked in. What were your guys' first impressions? Because. When we first walked in, I was very impressed with like the outside walls right, they yeah. had, and like, well, and the, like from the, the outside, cube. you can see the colors, yeah, stuff it, too, which is kind of weird because I wasn't expecting as like I've, there's pictures and stuff. Mm-hmm. I wasn't expecting as many colors as yeah. the no. outside. I mean, you drive up to it and there's freaking blue and green and yellow, shiny, and, yeah. like, shiny yeah. awesome. everywhere. It looks yeah. amazing. Picture if you've ever been to Mickey's Halloween party in Disneyland. Oh yeah. Picture those lights, like the lights they have. It's like purple green, like. Mm-hmm. orangish lights it's really cool which once you get in the park some of the lights are just sitting there well it's, yeah which are and i think that's co- has to do with the early development and they were like exposed i don't know though, you the can parts tell of the part like the 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 what's it called the, where the uh princess not the princess but the people in the garden the oh. fairies the like fairies. you walked in there that looks completely done Mm-hmm. You know, and it even had the fireplace and stuff. Exactly. But the lights are just shining just in shining your face. In, well, no, yeah. exactly. So like, it doesn't I, look like they're pointed. That's at what everything. I was actually going to bring up. Because there's a part in that fairy garden where you pass by a light and it like triggers a scare because it's like Halloween. Mm-hmm. I noticed that one of the lights was in a rock, but you could tell that there was something supposed to be covering it, but it had been taking off. Because yeah. there was like screws. and So I'm imagining, because this has to do with like early development, even one of the coolest areas, which was the swamp area, where you yeah. go over the bridge and there's that monster. Like like there was a ton of lights exposed and like random wires that you could see. You could see like the wires going through the bottom. It was like, it's weird. But I think that's something they'll fix. I, I, I don't think they're going to leave them. I'm sure. The one thing to say is like, I if you're expecting like Disney magic in terms of like, you don't know how they're doing things. Like, you don't see... If Disney doesn't want you to see something, you won't yeah. see it. Oh, yeah. Like, they won't make it obvious that it's like, hey, there's a light here, or this is where the fireworks come from. They don't show you that stuff at Disney theme parks. This place is not at that stage yet. Like, no. they are so early on to where it's like, yeah, you can see the lights pointing out. And like, you can literally see the bowl. Granted, the bowl I, I do it, think they even could. Even though you're in a fantasy theme park. Because one of the best examples was, towards the end of our experience, we ran into a troll carrying... A bunch, <laughs> a bunch awesome. of pumpkins on his back, and straight up, it sounded like his mouth was coming from the troll's mouth. Yeah. Which in in reality, it was just the guy standing, yeah. but the troll's head was down here. Which that for me was goblin. like okay, yeah. yeah, a goblin. And I was like, that for me was like that moment where I was like, okay, this is one of those the Disney esque things where mm-hmm. you don't know how they're doing it. Like, was oh, it actually a troll? Is it an animatronic? Whatever. And I like that. You know, mm-hmm. I, they need more of that. Yeah. Because that was definitely one of the highlights, which is weird. Yeah. What, so some of the stuff I liked, because so far it sounds like we're being pretty negative. but Well, we got it. Yeah, no, of course. Constructive of course, of course. But I also want to talk about what I actually liked. I think some of the stuff they had in there was awesome. Like oh One thing gosh. I really loved was the, the monastery, I think it was. Where you go in and they have like these vampire esque yeah. bad oh, guys, yeah, like this. and they have like these like the, a candlelight cavern. You're like underground under this monastery, and there's just these. It was like us walking guys. through a haunted house. Oh, yeah, yeah, it really was. Like, no, that's what I was actually uh-huh. gonna say because before I was gonna say like, after our first impressions, we kind of had like a, a good first impression, more like scenery, but we were kind of like, is that it? You know, because we we hadn't started our quest, we didn't know where to go. We were just walking around, and I remember we specifically were just walking around all three of us together and we happened to go in there Mm -hmm. and it was really dark and i was like dude it's like a haunted house because there was like vampires all around us every single corner and we were like one of them's got to be real yeah and so we were just expecting it well that's the thing too is they look like real people they're real people like this up against the wall even though i think most of them were mannequins but they straight up look but remember and then all of a sudden at the end i think one of them no not yet because remember what they said we, at the beginning, when we got in, they said, it's all kid hours until 8 o'clock. And oh, then it yeah. starts yeah. the actual, like, season of darkness mm-hmm. or something. Because then all the monsters came out, and there was, like, spiders. Yeah, and then the time, it was 6 o'clock, and then they're, like, it was, like... So oh, uh, like, you hear the oh, bell. Bell. I'm I'm until... Yeah. Yeah, so what they did is they had these uh, guys walking around that would be, like, 7 p.m. and all's well and evermore, or something like that. Yeah. And then by, I think it was 9 o'clock. Because they were like, open the monsters were coming out it was, to Nevermore. Yeah, like, it was monsters late. Are coming out to Nevermore. Because they, how they advertised it was, you can come with your kids until that time, and then it's going to be, like, scary. Because mm. it's the lore festival, which is expected. Mm. Um, but I remember we had gone in it before it was scary. But we were still, like, freaking terrified. And I feel like that moment is when it changed. 
Because remember, then you go up and you go into the monastery, and there's mm-hmm. the guy like <sighs> with the tree arm, yeah. and he's like, "Go and collect this rock and bring it back to me." And then we're like, "Whoa, that was the start of the quest, right?" Yeah. So real fast, when you first walk into Evermore, they give you this little pamphlet book, and in it is like. Uh, you can draw a self-portrait of yeah. yourself. You come up with your common name, your Evermore name, uh, your traits, your guilds, your story, and this becomes like who, who you your are. character is. Yeah. It's basically like if you ever played an RPG game like Skyrim, it's creating your you're character. You're built. Yeah, it's, it's who create, you are. You pause and you're just like yeah, yep. You create your character. I'm a magician. <laughs> yeah. And then they have uh, the map yeah. of Evermore Park, which, which, which speaking, which, like this about whole half, half of this was gone. It's about half. Of yeah. what this actually because this is. whole main area right here, this I mean, big castle they can't wasn't see even. This yeah, up, but. <laughs> of course there was. So it's pretty basic. They Imagine can't, they a, can't see. no, I know they can't see. Imagine a big circle, right? Pretty much the Little middle, <laughs> the middle of the circle, and the entire right half of the circle was completely closed. It hadn't even been finished. Fenced off. Tractors. Yeah, Hasten's showing the camera, but of course, if you're just listening, so, you can't see. This whole center right here wasn't actually even built. Yeah, they were still still working on it. So there was a good and like I don't know about you guys, but I, think, I still can't see. I, I think we <laughs> like still it's got. Blurry. I think we got plenty of content. Like even without that stuff, like I can't even imagine once they finish, like how much better it's gonna be. Well, so if you're wondering what you actually do in the park, um, when you first walk in, you're kind of you're very confused. Like if I'm being honest, when we first walked in, I was like. Where do what, I go? What do we even like I do went up right to the now? Well, when you walk in, there's, there's a the guy fake. with the white robes who are kind of talking to other people, uh-huh. which we walked by. We probably should have stopped and talked Probably, to yeah. Um, but you walk in there, and it's the fake, this guy named the fake king, and he's giving out names to you. Mm-hmm. So, like, your name. He is your guy. Evermore name, if you mm-hmm. want it. Yeah. yeah. But then again, like, I, I feel like they did want people to stop. Because they had so many of the white robe guys at first. I remember when we first walked in, I was having to like scooch in between white robed guys because I think they were trying to stop everybody and be like, "This is where your quest begins." But we just went on. Well, the, and- yeah, well, here's the thing. That's not our fault, though. Oh, of course, well, they, they need they, to do that. They, well, they need to have. They need to make either like make, a gate. Well, and no, then they're they like, need okay. either make it more obvious or they need to have. More and the map needs to have ropes. named locations. Well, no, yeah. it it needs to start as soon as you get in the park. It needs to be when you buy your ticket and you get this. That's when they start your quest. Well, because otherwise, you're that way you're at the gate. You're not in the park yet. You're still learning about it. Because once you're in the park, it's free reign. You can go think, wherever you want. And I, I think, think most of the time, they want it to be your quest. Which I understand. Mm-hmm. They want it to be... It's your own events that occur. But I do think at the very beginning, when you first walk in, I, I wish the workers... Because at the very beginning, there's workers. They look mm-hmm. like Disneyland cast members. They're not dressed up. Right. They're not cosplaying. They're, and I think they should be like, when you first walk in, your quest begins here in Main Street. And they should have it labeled on their map. They should show you the map and be like, this is Main Street. That's this so is funny. the opening courtyard. Yeah. This is where your quest begins. Talk to someone there and then go along. Go I, along your way. I was going to say the same they, thing. They cause... didn't do anything like that. And so when we first walked in, we were very confused and we were like, where do we even go This is here? awesome. Granted, it's though, really cool. It looks awesome. One, looks thing, one thing I did like is that every single person was at a different point in the quest. They started at a different point. Yeah. Which, what I that, hope they do... Yeah, that is cool. What they could do is instead of being like, oh, everybody starts here. So when, they, when you get into the park, they have pamphlets right and each pamphlet like there's like probably like 50 of each pamphlet but there's like three different sets and if you get this certain pamphlet it's like you start here and then if you get the other one it's like you start here so that way you still are with the other people starting start at the same the, point with that though is we even ran to it is where we'd run into these characters and start talking to them and they're like and you we, have this yeah and then they didn't seem to know how to like end a conversation i think mm-hmm. it's probably because we went three weeks after they opened yeah well, so and then also a training because we probably should have had well, quest well, that, before well no that. see that's the thing is like that's what i was gonna say it's like, like we went to the hunter right right and, and he was like and he was what? refused like i was like so we were told to come to you because like, we were told to go to him. Uh-huh. But I think we were supposed to go to someone else someone to get, and get him, something to else. Him. It's like and, if in and then finally, like game. after like bugging him for ten minutes to try and figure out what I'm supposed to do, he was like, <laughs> "Let me walk you over to this bridge." And then we didn't even get anything. <laughs> and I didn't get anything. Well, no, so yeah. we, we did. That's what the cool. That's where one of the cool parts is. Is we he we, he walks us over to a bridge. We run into this guy, and the guy tells us about his story. Whatever, it's pretty cool. And he gives us a card. Oh yeah, this these are really cool. Real fast, though, to make more sense of what we were just saying, picture you're in the park, and or picture you're playing a video game, and you jump onto Quest 8 b- 
before you do quests two through seven. And not even just quest like, eight. Quest part three of quest eight. Yeah. To so, where you're like in the middle of the quest. Yeah, there was moments where we would we jumped in and we were going on our quest and we would go up to someone random and talk and we'd be like, hey, how's it going? Blah, blah, blah. What do we do? And they'd be like, go to this person. And we'd go to that person and we'd find out we weren't supposed to be doing that until, exactly. until way later on or way earlier. And so it would throw off... Uh, the, the story a bit and the, ca- the characters think, themselves didn't know what they did they didn't know how to handle it well because like a perfect example is we ran into a knight with he had a pot on his head and we came up to him and he wouldn't speak to me mm-hmm. because I didn't have a rock he legit I was trying to talk to him he wouldn't speak to me but I didn't know I was supposed to have a rock but originally the person who gives me the rock is supposed to tell me I'm supposed to show it to him but I didn't even have the rock so that's the thing is they need to have a definitive way to start the quest. I agree with you. I think they should have multiple different quests that you don't start in the middle of them. Because I feel like where we started is we were in part 27 of quest 7. That, and then we went to part 8 of quest 2. Like we, And then we'd go backwards to chapter 2 of part 11. Yeah. And we'd be like, oh shoot. And we'd end up repeating a lot of the quest steps. Yeah. Oh, go get this rock well, again. And also, and cleanse it. And it's also, like, okay. the thing is, we got is like, so much gold. Yeah. That's <laughs> the only thing too, is like, you could theoretically lie if you wanted to. Because like, I think, and not even in like a bad way, because we were just confused. But like, I think at the Hunter one point was like, did you talk to the blah, blah, blah? And we, and just, we were just yeah. like, yes. Because we were like, I don't know who that is. I think we might have. And so he's just like, how do you know? How can I trust you did? And we're like, I don't know. Like we talked to oh, someone, and we who, just played dumb listen. and clueless, and he believed us because he well, knows. The, the, no, yeah. the thing is, we didn't even have to play dumb and clueless. We legit were dumb. And exactly. Clueless. We didn't know. No, that's the thing, and so he almost felt bad. So he's like, maybe these guys actually do he know. He did not give an. F. No, the hunter did not. He care. was the most the, relentless oh, character yeah. I've no, ever had to do. That's with one thing him. I have to hand it to him. He never broke character. Not once. I don't. He like was his straight up yeah. like a mean, <laughs> douchey hunter, and he was like. <laughs> but that that's cool, and that's what's cool about this world, though, is that there are different characters. Like I do remember, so the very first character I think we interacted with, um, not counting like the fairies or whatever, was the uh, acolytes. The yeah, acolytes which was Crow. dope. Which was so dope because so we wandered off. Me, Taryn, Hasten, kind of on our own. And they have this awesome statue. This oh really my cool gosh, that with, like, was that's that's what I was gonna bring up. That's my first introductory thing. Uh-huh. That's what I remember from the park. The Same. angel, is this, specifically all the statues. That's the highlight. Like, yeah. amazing. But uh, no, not angel, just the statue like, stabbing. It's like an angel stabbing a demon, or like yeah. it's an angel. It, it's on an top angel. Of a bunch it's of an angel like this, and he's like stabbing a demon, and the and demon's it's not like, small. It's, it's the size it's of huge. this room. Oh yeah, my! Like, it, it's like a a big ceramic statue. Like they, it's bigger than it's like. Four times bigger than the park. And not only is it a statue, it's in a fountain. So the fountain has things shooting up from it. It's beautiful. Yeah. It looks... If you want a Disney-esque on Disney quality, that was the closest you got. Oh, yeah. This amazing statue with these fountains shooting up. And around it, circling around it, are these mannequins Acolytes. of crows. And they're freaking... Sorry, the audio is just clipping a little. Oh, so. you're good. Yeah. It, it, it's these mannequins of crows, and it's like the coolest thing, because it's like this ritual, and you don't know which one's real, and then you walk up to one, and he like gets in front of you, he's like, are you guys friend or foe, or whatever. Well, and, it, this oh, yeah. is what one of my favorite things about Evermore is, um, we don't, I don't want to spoil anything necessarily for people, because I know it is like an interactive mm-hmm. thing, but this is, we're, I, I hope this more so just motivates you to try it. To try it, yeah. Um, it's, because I... Honestly, there's not much to spoil from what we knew, but we didn't. Um, we didn't. You, you don't. Yeah, and you also don't know for sure. Like what I loved is there was this moment where we at first thought. Uh, so we at first thought we were. We went to the acolytes, and the acolytes are these crow esque creatures. So that's the statue right there. If you're watching video, like that's the statue. It, it's it's amazing, right? The lighting. It, not to mention the lighting shooting onto it. It had like the different sort of tones to where every part of it was illuminated. It looked like it was glowing from a distance. Mm-hmm. Like I remember at one point we were walking and we saw it. We're like, whoa, that looks sick over there. And it was right next to like a mausoleum and then a bunch of big pumpkins. And we're like, we have to go over there. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me very much of Skyrim. Because you're able to see something and go towards that. Instead of feeling like you have to go a certain way. You, I felt like you could go wherever you wanted. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, we had to personally find the knight with the pot on his head. 
Because they're like, to get this rock, Duffy. you have to find <laughs> Duffy or whatever. Yeah. And we literally looked around. We're like, where's this freaking dude? And then we finally find it. Like, I love that. I well, think real that fast, going back to what I was saying is one thing I loved about the park was is that there's this moment where we went to the Acolytes very first. Mm-hmm. And so the Acolytes told us what we should be doing. And they told us, beware the faking. The fa- faking tries to sway you or something mm-hmm. like that. And we're like, huh, that's weird. Yeah, the faking does look evil. Like, if you go see the faking... Oh, he's like this, he, this he fiery like, demon statue. Yeah, he looks like. very scary. And you so really have like, to pick your side. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's what I love is the acolytes were like, bring us gold and we'll tell you more information. So that sounded a little sketchy. And then we go get this gold. And as we're getting this gold from these other people, they're like, why do you need this gold? And we're like, oh, we need to give it to the acolytes and for like, information. No. And they're like, don't, no, trust, the don't trust the acolytes. The acolytes, the acolytes are evil. Gold. Yeah, and then we're like, oh, frick. Who do we, we trust? Were, and we were dumb at first because we were just like trusting them. We're like, oh, they must know. But then we realized we have to choose ourselves because everyone was because we would ask. There was people like, I would talk to that would be like, don't trust the acolytes. And, and then, then we'd say people, why? Then there would be people though that are like, oh, you're on the side of the acolytes. Yes, here and they don't give you trust gold. the banking. Like, oh, it's like who's bad? Who the heck is good? You don't know. That's well. And eventually cool we got into a conversation with one of the Fay King's uh, disciples. He's like this white robed guy, and we're like, why should we trust the Fay King? And he said, because we're not the Acolytes or something. And we said, well, why shouldn't we trust the Acolytes? And they're like, well, they believe in the darkness. And we said, well, the Acolytes said that about you. So you pretty much have to discover for yourself. Because nobody will tell you the answer. Yeah. Nobody will yeah. be like, yeah, this is the bad guy. This is the good guy. You have to figure it, it out. It's yourself. all up to interpretation. It's yeah. all up to what you want to believe. Exactly. It's all your, it's story. your story. You really do control your story. That's what's really cool. And it is like... You know, I haven't played Skyrim like you guys have, but from what I understand in Skyrim, you can join different like Guild. guilds Guild and you make and your stuff. character. It's like and, you feel. it's up to your interpretation if they're the good guys or bad guys. Right? Oh yeah, like, you the, you can either join the Dark Brotherhood or kill them, and you get a different quest either way. You know, but you have that choice to mm-hmm. discover if you think they're good or not. You and can see, join the Thieves Guild or you can destroy, destroy the Thieves Guild. Mm-hmm. And see, that's what's really cool is like at the end of the day, at the end of once we left the park. It's cool because I had a sense of what my story was. And I was yeah. kind of like, in my mind, if we're to go back, I'm like, I'm on the Acolytes yeah, side. Yeah, still. As of right now, it's like, I think the Acolytes are onto something. Everything they, they said, the only thing. But then there's also parts of me that are like, man, they did bother us with a lot of gold, though. Like, they kept taking all of our gold. No, they like, did. They yeah, took, like, like three pieces They were gold. scamming us. They were, they were like, bring us a piece of gold. Then we'd bring them the gold, and they'd be like, okay, bring us two more. Okay, we'll bring tell us three you, more. We'll tell you tell, this secret. Tell us then, ten pieces of gold. And then he told me a secret, and it was Only some you. crap. It yeah. was some crap secret, like, the water is the magic of life, and, or something. And I'm like, what the frick does that mean? Yeah. Like, do I need to bring a water bottle and yeah. just, like, give and it to course, you? And, of course, I'm sh- I'm sure it goes later on into the quest where you have to tell that to somebody but it's just there's so much um what's the word? like replay value almost mm-hmm. but not really like playing it like well, there is experience so many it. quest lines like yeah it's funny because we ran into uh a kid we used to know and he was there and he was all decked out like he was dressed up as a pirate he was dressed up and he's like oh this is like my fifth time here and it's like dude they've only been i have all these weeks. cards <laughs> <laughs> like you're crazy. And he's like, oh, I just keep coming back for more quests and whatnot. And we're like, yeah. <laughs> he even said like, more. he was like, I just got done with work, so I just decided to come here. And I'm like, what the frick? Yeah. Like, <laughs> well, and it's like that's awesome though. It's yeah, like, that's that cool. If like, if it is something you're if you're that into passionate it. about, oh, yeah. and you want to know all the storylines and you want to discover the world of what Evermore is, you can. And they really have done a great job at building up a curiosity and oh, mystery of what Evermore is. It's intriguing. Is. Like you want to know, you want to know. Because yeah. you're like, who's the bad guy? Who's the good guy? Who's this guy? Why do I need Who this? Who founded Evermore? Who f- like, yeah, yeah. Just stuff like that. It's like, yeah. is there other parts of Evermore? Or like, mm-hmm. Is there guys that I haven't even met? See, that's, what if there's that, a third faction? That would faction? be stuff that's cool is if, in like, just like in a video game, how they're like, they're like an expansion is coming in May 2019. The expansion is this left hemisphere. The upper left hemisphere is now complete. We have the windmill and the church. Like, and there's a new faction. on. Who is against the Acolytes and the Fae King. So you have to choose between the three. But And uh, one thing that I was going to say is the end, the possibilities are endless with this park. They could literally do anything. Because mm-hmm. one thing they advertised at FantasyCon is they said, we have pirates, ghosts, medieval. Yeah, pirates. Pirates. If they do yeah. pirates, we're going. That oh my gosh. Awesome. Like, And that's the thing is... It, yeah, we are going if they do pirates. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's on a level that I feel like you can always go back to it. It reminds me of an ongoing video game, but an ongoing park. Because I love Disneyland. Yeah. But it's not different every time you go. Unless you go during the different events, but 
something like fantasy. Co- or well, l- let's be clear. This be. has the potential. The potential. Yeah, it's not it hasn't yet. proven it yet. Not yet. But it has the but it has the potential to, to be really brand new and completely different every single time you go, mm-hmm. which is really intriguing. It makes me want to go back right now. It makes me want to go like at least once during every season. Yeah, you know, something like that would be really cool. And depending I mean, on how it's done. Right? For example, there was an entire part of the story we didn't even know about. There was these crazy guys in the world with tree parts of their limbs. Mm-hmm. We never once figured out what that was about. We don't know what don't the, how they were infected, what they were. Because even them, we never went into the mausoleum and talked to them. They could have been another faction and been like, we're the good guys. You know, like we never know. And that's what's so awesome is we could go back even now. And let's say if they I haven't... find Groot in that park, I'm partnering up with them. Yeah. <laughs> but like, let's say they haven't changed anything yet. And they, they haven't fixed anything. And it's the exact same. We would still have so much new stuff to do. Well, and there's even stuff like, at one point, I think it was the hunter was like, get five bullseyes in a row with at the archery range. And oh, I'm yeah. like... I'm like, we wanted to do that. Like, we how? wanted to, but the line was so the line, long. And wow. see, that, see, this is all stuff that they can work on. And, and I hope they do. Because but what's the beauty of it is it doesn't cost money to do that. No. Like, you but don't have to pay to That's not something that you should have to wait in line. Exactly. And also, you are paying for it. Because we are paying our It comes our with time. the ticket. Yeah. Our time we paid for in the park, we are not being able to do something because the line is so ridiculously long. We would have literally been waiting in line for an hour. An hour of our time in the park would have been spent waiting in a line. What I meant, though, is it's axe. not a separate transaction you're not paying to get into the park but then you also have to pay to throw axes yeah totally. you know it's part of your package tour if you wanted to you could literally throw axes the entire time the thing is though is it's like waiting in line at but Disneyland. you throw axes four times mm-hmm. you know, but you'd only throw axes like four times yeah true and the thing is too is like waiting in line at disneyland it's the same thing it's like you are paying for that it is your time the thing about disneyland though is it's open all day Evermore, as of right now, is only open at night. It's not open during mm-hmm. the day. And the reason why they do that is, I think, to disguise all the uh, construction they have, they going, have going on. on. Which I think eventually they'll. I think eventually. I kind of want to go in the summer day. during the like when it's like the hours are nine Light o'clock. Up. That'd you be know, way cool. It's dark at nine. And they and they have it complete because like when they, I think for sh- certain, once they have it like complete, they'll be open during open during the days, especially on weekends. When they have it complete, it's gonna be a whole new experience, honestly. Like. Because there was disappointing things where it's like you're walking around and it's like you just see a chain link. Well, dude, you're like, <laughs> for example, the main. So on the picture, for example, on the circle, the entrance is at the bottom. Literally, the first area was closed off. That main big castle in the middle wasn't even done yet. Mm. Yeah, we didn't even see that entire like, it area. It looks like in the very middle of Evermore, they're building like an amphitheater. Yeah. Like yeah. something where they're going to do shows. Like joust. Like if they could, they could do jousting. They could do dude. jousting. They could do. Dragon, just like cool, like a jester juggling. They could do like a things. what's an animated, an animatronic yeah, dragon, like, 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 like the Disneyland Nightmare Thirteen, like That'd the Disneyland awesome. one where it's Maleficent. She comes out with a big dragon. It's like, oh, yeah, that'd be sick. And and spits uh, fire and burns a knight or something. That'd exactly. Awesome. And yeah. I don't think this is necessarily part of their plan, and I don't think it's gonna happen necessarily. But no. it would be cool if one day they do like dark rides. Like oh, yeah. Disneyland esque dark rides. Like picture like how Pirates of the Caribbean is. Just like a little ride you're on with like some yeah. animatronics. I definitely think cool. if they got big enough, they one hundred percent would do it. I mean he's I don't a Disneyland. Think, I don't think one hundred percent. I think they want it I think they want this to be different. And I think they're not gonna have But rides. they had one close to it. I mean, they had for instance a, a little hobbit hole, which was the witch's grotto, which was so cool. Yeah. You go in there and it's super dark and there's like flickering candles. And there's like baby dolls like in chairs like all lined up as you go in. And you hear like <laughs> in like the distance and stuff. And you walk in there's this big long table. That's not a ride though because like, yeah, there's so ride. many people yeah, just they, wandering around. But they around could it. make it an interactive dark Well, yeah, but it isn't a ride. It's not. It's not. But I, I feel like they can expand on a lot of those ideas that they already have. Well, like, even the mausoleum. Well, that's what like, I'm saying. The underside yeah. is a haunted house, but like the above. They could make it where you're on a track. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like they could yeah. make rights up. I don't exactly. think they will though. Is I I think their plan is to have it be something mm-hmm. different, something more interactive, more RPG based, not mm-hmm. ride based. Right. Not it's not a uh, attraction park it, or what is it called? What's the difference? There's theme parks and then attraction. Is it attractions? What What are you thinking of? Like roller coaster park, theme park. Oh, man, I'm blanking a on it. A theme park like is what, like Six night. Flags. Like, what is Six Flags? Six Flags is a, is a roller coaster six park. Six Flags. A thrill... Uh, this thrill is going to bug the crap out of me. I've got to find I'm pretty it. sure it's an attraction park because it's attraction. Like, the rides are attractions. Yeah, yeah they park. have, like, a name for it. Amusement, amusement park. park. Amusement park. Thank I you. I thought oh of it gosh. exactly yeah. as you said. Amusement park, yep. 
So amusement park is more like you go on rides and stuff like mm-hmm. that. While a theme park is themed after something. Evermore is more themed and not It's, it's a theme based. park. Yeah, it's not an amusement park. I, I'd, I'd classify Disneyland it as Disneyland is both. New, Disneyland's yeah. in a, a themed amusement park. Exactly. Know? And I'd classify Evermore as, a, as its own thing, honestly. I think it's more oh, it of an is. interactive park instead of a theme. It's the even. first of its kind, really. Mm-hmm. It's the first interactive park. And it is something really um, unique. And I don't want to use the word yet because it's up for debate, but revolutionary. Like, if it can do it right... It's going to be revolutionary. The potential to be revolutionary. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, because it has this park has so much potential. Oh, yeah. Now, it just has to live up to that potential. Like, it can be so good. If they just work hard and get, you know, knees down and get everybody working on it, they can make this park really awesome. Because it's already there, but they just need to fix some things. They need to, you know, finish the park, first of all. Yeah. And then just fix those little... I hope, inconsistency. I hope they can the get park. through the park building. Me too. I hope this spring and summer. I hope. I mean, because obviously right now they're not doing any building because it's it's super snowing here in Utah <laughs> right now, but in Salt Lake especially. But Probably like uh, negative. I think days. hopefully in spring summertime they really hunker down and just decide just to done. go all out and build it. Even if they have I mean, to close, close the park for two months, like just close it. Just be like two months we're closed and for summer for Mythos we're gonna open on. June, end of June, June and it's going to be awesome. Because I'm telling be awesome. you what, like, as soon as they do that, I'm going. Because do you remember some of the stuff they were working well, on? Well, I'm going. <laughs> there was, like, there was like the ruin, the ruins of a castle. There was, like, the Viking um, house. It was, like, the Viking thing. It had, like, the dragon statue coming out of the end. Can't remember. Oh, they had some sick-looking buildings that weren't even finished yet that, even for those alone, like, going in there, seeing what those are, seeing the characters, the new quest steps, the new quests themselves. What would you guys say your new favorite, uh, like, place was that was there as of right now? The garden. With the all garden? the pumpkins. I really liked Mine was the, the statue. The uh, yeah, statue I liked cool. the statue mausoleum area. That was probably my favorite. But also, I loved the tavern. I loved the, the tavern, tavern, was really, with, the tavern was with cool. all the people. And there was, I tell you what, shout out, I don't know who it was, and I wish there was a way to... But whoever was playing the dwarf Dude. was oh my so god, he was good. talented. Yeah, he was like he was going all out, and he picture, he was like it was, he was oh there, laddie. He looked like a, like yeah. a, a and, giant. Face. He sounded yeah. just like it didn't he sound like a pic- cringy accent. It was like a it's genuine perfect. Scottish pic- like picture. Uh, Gimli. Picture Gimli. Yeah. Picture Gimli. Yeah. He sounded just like freaking Gimli. Like, oh, I see the bottom. What <laughs> even even like something as cool as in the corner it was which hilarious. Too, was yeah. something that was barely noticed was there was a huntress girl. Yeah. With one of the beasts slain yeah. on the table, and it looked so gross. Mm-hmm. Like you would touch it, and it felt slimy. Like that's, that's you're so you're not cool. supposed to touch it. <laughs> you're not supposed to, yeah. No, but even if you did, though, it felt slimy, and there was like spit coming out of the monster's mouth. It was really cool. Like, I even tell you what, too. Details. Like there's some things they could really do to make it even more uh, appealing, or want me to go back. Like these collectible cards are part of it. Like it'd be getting cool all if, of those cards. Yeah, it'd oh be cool gosh. if like. Every if you did every quest you get or if you did a quest you get a card. It's like you did the blah 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 quest. You completed it. Here's your collectible card. Like this card. one's like the the con man one. Yeah, the con man. Which it's, is which is an easy one because he's yeah. he's at the beginning and you just kind of ask him for a card. And he <laughs> yeah, it. exactly. But we're like, no, you give him a piece of gold and he gives you a. card. I think we got two cards right total. So one of them was the cards. hard one. This one is the one we got from doing the whole hunter quest and. With the acolytes, and it led to that where the guy at the very end just gave us the card because the park was closing, and he's like, "Fine, yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> where, I, where I was, where I forced him. We to were like, card. "Please, we just." He was like, "I'll give you one card," and I was like, "But we all want." Yeah, it. one yeah. card. And he's, <laughs> he's like, like "Oh, fine." Give you two cards. It's like we, we, it's like we, we were almost like intimidating him. Like we were like crowding around him, like. Could give us more cards. He's like, oh, my, please. Yeah, I, think, I think they can. Uh, please, my lord. <laughs> I think there is some things they can work on with the actors a little bit. Yeah. Just into, and that's not, I'm not even. It's not their fault. The acting yeah. was mostly actually really good. Like okay. most of the people, like did them, all character. working together. And here's exactly, the thing: yeah. is I feel like I don't even blame them because I feel like they did their job, but at the same time. They got kind of screwed over because so they made twelve dollars, and they were so <laughs> they got so confused because people would come to them with the wrong quest step or they would be the wrong person and they didn't know how to react. Well, and they I didn't wait, know how to divert I do them wish away. that sometimes yeah, the thing is they need to have more people to help accommodate for all the Instead traffic. of it just being one person it, that you go honestly, to, it's like a group. It may have been because we went on a Saturday night. Which was probably was one of the packed. busiest nights. It was packed. We should we go on like a Thursday. Night yeah, if we went something. on a weekday, I'm sure it would be slower and it would be more intimate because there was moments where it was like there was 20 people trying to talk to the same lady and it was like, oh my gosh, 
how is she even supposed to comprehend what is even happening? Do we all have to go up to her and tell her what we heard from the person back there? It's going to take an hour just to get yeah. through this lady. So, and that might just lead us to another quest step. Like, is it worth it waiting? Yeah. yeah. Oh, and that's another thing. That's one other little gripe I had is a lot of it felt like fetch quests, which are oh, my yeah. least favorite thing in video games. Like, a lot of it felt like, go get this and then give it to my friend and he'll give you something get, to go give to that person. Give me this rock that is blessed by the witches, then bring it back to me and I will give you gold. Then take it to the acolytes and they will make you get more gold. It's yeah. like... It would almost just seem like a never-ending circle, mm -hmm. which that might have been our fault, like not going. Which, in the granted, right direction. though, there was but a couple why, cool quests. That's why these are cool, though, if they uh, did it right and were like, "You completed the quest now. This is your reward." Right. If they had rewards for it, it would be. I would do all the fetch quests I, to do it to get an award. You know. I do like that you brought up the fetch quest thing because that is was a gripe of mine. I, what they need to do is, is expand more on certain quests because they had one that was really cool. You talk to this lady, she's a fairy, and she's like, oh, go talk to somebody in the park and ask them what a cell phone is and record them saying it. Yeah, well, she, yeah. that was weird. Well, she, but she, she said magic box. She said, like, she's magic, magic box. Because yeah. she said, what is this magic box in your hand? And then she says, like, record somebody <laughs> say, we say totally say it. We totally cheated that system. Yeah, we did. Uh, we, like, we used it to get multiple the video, people. and I was like, I said, in the video, go show her that video. <laughs> <laughs> and then I remember, I realized that you can just ask them for more gold, because she was like, here's a piece of gold. And I'm like, can I have two pieces? And she's like, sure. And I'm like, what the frick? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, can I have three pieces? But I mean, I mean, that's, I mean, I guess if you think about it, that's what real about life. Four? Yeah. It is cool that it's not like a video game where it's like, you can only do this. But like I said, like, you can't bargain in Skyrim or something like that. Yeah. Give me five legendary items or something like that, you know? But I, I, I like that works, but... kind what of... What if I was like, can I have a handful of gold? And she's like... Yeah. She's like, they're <laughs> just rocks painted gold anyway. <laughs> but um, I, I like that type of quest because it's not a fetch quest. You know, it's something that you actually have to do. Yep. Or even something like the Hunter's one where we didn't get to do we it, but get getting do it, bullseyes. Yeah, that is cool. It's like, it's mixing it up. They need to It's add not like, oh, go like get that. this and bring it back. Yeah, it would be cool if he's like... And Go that's, slay another, that's the another troll. thing that's hard too, though, is it's like, how would they know if you got the five bullseyes? We could literally exactly. just walk away, come back in 10 but, minutes, and be like, but that's why the bullseye, bullseye that, card. But that's yeah, why. Yeah, see, that's stuff they can add to make you. Bring me you know, the bullseye card to see, prove, to your, prove your. But of course, of course cool. they can enforce this a little better, where they, they do have rules of play, where it's be whoever you wish. Remain res res respectful to what others. If you're just like a rapist from <laughs> <laughs> rapist from Kazakhstan. Come here, woman. Come here. I have to be my character. <laughs> it's my character. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself. You can't do that. That's a woman. I can't touch you. <laughs> that's so funny that that was literally the next one. <laughs> It's like it knew. It's like, okay, people are going to do it. Put that and in it has it like, it was an exclamation point. <laughs> no, but then it says remember to play. And. I, I do like that. If they did something where it's like, yeah. Where <laughs> they are like, go get five bullseyes. And when you go to do your axe things, they just put a piece of paper with the bullseye. And they can actually see and it'll cut. Like, I, the thing. I like Hasten's idea, though. I think it would be cool if, like, you went, he's like, go get five bullseyes. So you go to the bullseye range, or not, the, the shooting range, and you shoot uh, five bullseyes in a row. And the man there is like, you did it! Unbelievable! And he gives Here's you a badge. Heart. He gives you a badge. He's like, and it's like an arrow. And it's like, you are one of the... It proves. Like people, it, this proves. Or if it, even if it was like, like a cheap plastic a pin, pin. A pin, a button. Yeah. Yeah, and you attach it to like a loincloth you have. And you put it on That'd and be it's cool. like, yeah, and you walk up and you're like, look, I have the badge. I did. And then he's thing. like, okay, you did it. Here's your quest. Here's, you wanna... here's your, here's your next job or here's your card for completing the arrow shooter quest. Yeah. You know? And, and so they like, could, oh, cool. I love that. And they could do so many with that thing. I like that idea of like the badges. They could even do one where it's like the hunter's like, I need you to go slay the beast of the deep. And you go and you find it, and there's a guy there, and he's like, "Help me slay the beast," you know, or something. And you have to be like say a magic spell out of your book, like yeah, blah blah blah, and then cast it, and then the guy will be like, "You've defeated it." It'd be cool too Take if the like badge. there was a way for them to control the amount of people going into certain areas, because it'd be cool if like we went on a quest where it's like, yeah, it's underground, and there's a guy who's fighting this wolf, because they have cool animatronics. They do. They and so it'd be cool if it was just like it wasn't actually attacking him, but it's just kind of coming out. He's like, "Help me! You need to say the spell." And maybe it's like he's pretending it's like pulling his sword in, and then like you. <laughs> If you do the wrong spell or if you don't do what's right, it'll, like, he eat dies. Him. He yeah. dies. Like, ah! He won't actually get you, but he'll just well, be like, ah, and he'll just fall to the ground. It's like, like in the right. actual things, it's like, oh. <laughs> well, that'd be kind of cool. Though, be like a Skyrim like, character, like, oh. Or it'd be cool if they had, like, a trap door. Freeze in their spot and just. It'd be cool they, if they had, like, <laughs> a. <laughs> 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 it'd be cool if they just had, like, a trap door. Like, all of a sudden, something opens and he's just like, ah, ah! and he falls down into it, and you're like, 
Or even gets dead. dragged away. Like, it's like a hill. He's, like, on a hill, and he just gets dragged down here. And really, he's just, like, Well, sitting. picture, like, the thing that... After the uh, adult stuff started happening after, like, nine... When like the brothel opened this up, no. <laughs> there was there was the red light district. <laughs> That's where I yeah. take that role. No, but like when I'm you... the owner of the brothel. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> but remember, like Welcome. When we... everything is free for me. <laughs> remember when we went around Remove, the, uh, the graveyard area and there was the skeleton guy who all of a sudden popped out of us like a haunted house. Not a skeleton. The crap it was the spider. No, no, there was a it man. Was... There was a man inside the Oh my gosh, grave. yeah. Yeah, and he like came out as a real person. Yeah, so it scared the crap out of me. It was literally as the the tale of darkness started or whatever, and literally we're walking, me and Connor are heading toward an area, and it's literally like a guy out of a hole is like, yeah, and we were, I was like freaking out. Like, mm-hmm. and then they also have the, the spider animatronic. They have this really cool like spider creature thing that when you walk past it, like jumps out at you. And it's like legs extend. Do you remember that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, yeah. I love that. that. That kind of stuff is. Well, sick. see, that's that's what I was thinking. Is it would be cool. Um, there's precedent for like that guy pops out of like a crypt hole. Like there's literally just a hole in the ground. They could have characters that get like pretend to be killed and they just fall down in that, and then they just stay and exactly. you can't see them. You can't and see then, them. And then maybe they have a little passageway for like. They need to do a thing. Uh, they probably can't at this point. But like Disneyland, Disneyland is an underground, they have an underground thing for like all their characters. Like all the characters go down underground and they can get to different areas of the park and like it's just a secret hangout place for workers. Mm-hmm. It'd be cool if they had something like that to where characters can like disappear from one area and go to a new area and like respawn theoretically or yeah. something like that. Yeah, you know that'd be sick. Like they could do so, like we said. There's so much potential that they have with this park. Like endless possibilities. Obviously, they could do. Um, things where you have to slay a certain skeleton and he gives you like a special bone that with that bone you have to like imbue it with magic and throw it at the faking and then he ex- like his, his he like gets destroyed and you have to take that badge and then take it to the hunter and you win the quest or something like do you know how cool it would be if they had stuff like what we're talking about with like these buttons like if yeah. you can earn these buttons or badges or whatever and it's like you can you can become whatever you want in the park to where like one of the things you can do is you can become a wizard like Gauntlet, picture you can be a wizard, you can be a knight, you can be a jester, you can be well, a... And you can even uh, rank up. Dwarf. Dwarf. <laughs> you can <laughs> even rank up and you, you start out as a novice wizard. You can shrink then and you're get an, fatter. <laughs> then, then, oh, you're no. an, then you're an apprentice wizard, then you're an adept wizard, then you're a a, leg, a master wizard. Well, and then you're a... Master uh, wizard. Or like, what are they called? Like a... Uh, well, what if like... What do they call What Gauntlet? if you get like these pins or cards... And depending on how many cards you have at the end, like when you walk out of the park, you got like a prize. Yeah. Like you get, you get, I I don't know, like $5 off the next time you come. Or if you, (laughs) oh yeah, or you, if you complete the entire quest, you get to come back again for free. No, it'd be cool as if like, yeah, you got five badges, you got the five wizard badges, you did the wizard's quest. You get At the end on the way out, they give you one, you're like, you are now a wizard. When you come back, you can call yourself wizard hall. Even if it's not a wand, if that's too expensive, even just a card that's like holographic. And it says I think they can do a wand for really cheap, though. Yeah, just well, yeah, but even if not a wand, right? Even something like a holographic card that says Master Wizard, because that's something that's collectible. Like you can be like, oh yeah, one to. I went to Evermore last week and or, I became or, a master wizard. Or they have like picture buttons. <laughs> You're telling that story to your I girls. I became a master wizard last week. <laughs> hey, guess what? I became a master wizard. <laughs> like, well, picture You're you telling your buddies five at work. <laughs> Love you so. <laughs> Love you so. You earn like five badges for the wizard class. And then at the, on the way out, they like, you. if you earned all five, they're like, here, you are now a certified wizard. They give you like a big pin, like mm-hmm. a, a nice pin that you can put on. Yeah. So next time you come back, it's like, you can therefore now call yourself a wizard. Like, you, are you know, like the real pins? In the, yeah. In the world. Like, the, like, it's like, okay, yeah, now like you are, pin. and that way you can go back and be or like, replayability. Even if it was a card, they, they give you a card and they're like, this shows, and they give you a card book. And you can keep cards, and it's like, look, well, they could even, I am a master wizard. So any quest line that involves a wizard, yeah. you can now be a part of. Even if they don't um, automatically, because you are a wizard. Even if they don't give you the card book, they they could sell a satchel where it has card holders right here, and then also has p- places for pins where you can put your cards. <laughs> <laughs> you put it on to go out to the mall. <laughs> You're like, <"Ugh!" laughs> that's what I was just thinking. I'm just a master like, wizard, <laughs> knight, and archer. And I have got all the cards. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. I think this is an awesome idea. Like, I, I was agreeing with you guys. I was just picturing, like, somebody gets that, somebody's walking around just, like, in public. Like, because, Look, I got five wizard cards and pins. I am a, I am a knight. I am the new headmaster. 
<laughs> I'm the headmaster of the thieves guild. <laughs> but you know what I mean, though. Like He's super nerdy. <laughs> like they could do so much with it, where then you can go back. You know, yeah. you go back next week and you're like, okay, I, I became the wizard now. Now I can do the knight's quest. I can do all the things. That- <laughs> Shut up! No, <laughs> the knight quest! <laughs> the knight! We all saw I got the place to order at the end! Uh, you know, it's like a blow up sword. To, to I'm not laughing anybody. anymore. I, I'm just picturing. I know, I know. <laughs> like the nerdiest people. Like, I mean, it could be us. Like, like, girl, like doing like the anime run down the Dude, supermarket, like. A cool <laughs> satchel. I would never wear it in public. But, no, yeah, but I would but totally it's something wear it at the park. I would take a I mean, picture of myself yeah, with it. But yeah. it's like it's like this. I would never walk around with this in public and be like, oh yeah, I got this question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I got the con man's car. Okay, I am the con man. <laughs> oh wait, no, that's actually true. <laughs> I'm Connor, con man. <laughs> no, but look. But pins though, like I would put up yeah. in my room. Oh yeah. Like, I would oh, even put like, pins on like something like a backpack. Well, I'd, I'd put these <laughs> frick. <laughs> I'd put these up too, like if they gave you like a cool collectible card display thing mm-hmm. to put like if they sold those separately 10 bucks at the park you can get a cool card display oh my gosh, case yeah. that'd be awesome and you can collect them and then put them up in your room that's what I'm saying and then also come back and when you come to the park it's like a pin bag or a satchel thing like if you know what a Boy Scout is, they have these things that they yeah, wear across like with a bunch of badges. Like it'd be that something like that, that way. you put it on, and, and it displays all the things you've earned. Because like, I love it's, it's to show off your merit, like what level. You yeah, are. I love that idea. Like you, you go and you're like, I want to be, you know, a knight this time, and you, you slowly way make your way through. You know, you start as novice, adept, and whatever. But then at the very end, you get that collectible pin. You know, it's, yeah. it's really cool because then. That's something that wants well, to make you want to come back. Imagine too, you're you completed the, the faking quest. You got yeah. the pin. Well, then imagine you know? you're walking around the park and you see someone with a dope pin, and you're like, "How'd you oh, get that? How'd you get that pin?" And yeah. then he's like, "Oh, you have to go on the the night the quest. quest, or the like I quest. slayed the faking." It's like, yeah, or yeah, I I have defeated one of the faking's top generals. Yeah, and like, I got this magic. pin. Like one of the, it's a picture like the ring race, the nine. Yeah. It's like I defeated one of the nine and like, so he has his head. Like exactly. A of his head. Exactly. Like he's like, I, this is his head and it's just like a miniature Gosh. way to show that. Like Our imagination is so cool. just running, like we're, we're filmmakers. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know that, yeah. but we're filmmakers and I feel, yeah. I feel like with us being filmmakers, our mind just starts running. Just way, gets, running oh, way crazy. too crazy. But, but I, I it's feel like, like imagine not... kind of how expensive that would be. Oh my gosh. Well, no, like, because that's the thing. They have to finish cool. that. Look, they can make the quests hard. Here's yeah. the thing. Guess. They don't have to be crazy pins. Well, we're not talking this needs to happen right away. If this happens over five years, for, that'd be really cool. For example. Once they've earned money. When I was in middle school, they gave us pins for getting 4.0s. They were like the bland... They were yeah. still pins. Uh-huh. Like they still pinned in with the back thing. But they were just flat. And they, you could tell that they were really cheaply made. Yeah. Even that mm-hmm. is worth it. Because it, it comes with part of your pay. That's the thing. is You're paying for those pins. But if you don't well, collect well, them... Well, think then... about this though. If they do the pins... The pins are rare. You have to actually complete the storylines to do it. You have to put in time. Meaning you're spending... 30 bucks every time you go to earn those. Because look, like, hey, so they're making money and then if you get the pins, that's going to take time. It's not even a guarantee you get you know them. What they can do? make it, they I can would pay an extra like 10 bucks if they made the pins nicer. Yeah. You know and what I mean? and yeah. here's the thing, like if they're they, like Disney pins. That'd be dope. Yeah, oh, like, like, be you, really like cool. you said, they could even, like you were saying, make it harder, the quest's harder. That way, in order to even earn the pin, you have to come to Evermore like three times. Well, that's what You're they spending could, like a hundred something bucks yeah. To get that one pin, it, people are gonna. Well, do that's that. totally what Plus they the could do. the apples that you buy and yeah, yeah, yeah. all the stuff they sell there. I mean, yeah, exactly. That's and if you buy like the satchel totally thing and the card holder, like, oh my god! I don't gosh. think they had a ton of food. No, they I think that's more. another thing they were just starting to, mm-hmm. and they didn't have. Yeah. Like they, you know, they could do, uh, dude. If they had a dining hall, no. What I was thinking, they could do chicken. They could do like turkey legs. Dude, the tavern, the tavern could straight up be used as a real tavern. Or we'll think of sell butter beer. I think they had a dining hall in progress. That big opening thing that we walked by. I think, imagine if they that had was that. Supposed to be, I think that was supposed to be a full restaurant. I think so, too. Do you know how cool it would be if, like, you would walk in there and you could buy mead or, like, yeah, a big turkey leg or, um, like, some... Mead in a bottle s- that we could s- take home because we none of us drink. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, like, some sort of soup or something like that. Or, like, like yeah, awesome. or, like, you go into this cool Carmel little, like... Apples. It almost seems like this rustic, like, Viking-esque building and you go in and there's a bunch of dwarves and they're like, hey, and you can buy butterbeer and they, like... And the characters come and interact with you. You're all sitting at your table and he, like, oh, slams you down slam the thing. Mugs together. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> he's like, to us, and then you all like take a yeah, drink. Oh, it's it. everywhere. Dude, they totally need a dining hall. 
Like yeah. that would be a perfect it, thing. And have dwarves hanging out in there. And like, or like picture uh, the the prancing pony or whatever in Lord, Lord of the Rings. Rings. Like Strider sitting in the corner next to a fireplace. And, and he's, he's, he's got a quest. quest line thing. Yeah. yeah. And, and then and, and you've him. even got like the barkeep who's like that Strider over there. Yeah. He you gives you a piece. Yeah. yeah. Or and maybe oh, what would be cool is like if you can't approach Strider until you find out until you the, mm-hmm. until you talk to the barkeep. Like, or you need a certain item to talk to him. This is how they like if you go up to him and you show him like you have the bow. Well, this is how they can do it. Once again, this is perfect. These cards can't cost too much. Like, I oh mean, my gosh, these no. ones are pretty nice, but if they made ones cheaper than this, picture you they go can't up to cost the any more than these, and they give these well, out. Yeah, picture you go up to the barkeep. It's like, who's that man in the corner? Oh, he's Strider. Blah blah blah. Tell him I sent you. He gives you this card. This is proof. It's like the Strider card or something like that. So you walk up to him. You just flash it to or him. Or it says like, it says barkeep, and you go up there and you yeah. Say, well, and you, you just, just walk up to Strider and you flash it to him. You're like, my name is Connor of the of, third of, realm. Of, of the third realm. You know, we give him that, and then we give him the card, or show him the card, and then he leads us on the quest. Right. So you just collect these cards to show you've done certain parts of the quest. And then if you finish the quest, the, the grand prize is a pin. Yeah. And a pin, like we were saying, they could do nicer ones, but even if they did cheap ones, that can't cost them too much to do overall with yeah. the amount of people that actually finished And the like quest. like Hasten said, even if they did make it swear, oh, you completed the quest, you can buy a collected pin for like 10 bucks. I would do it because I earned that pin. Nobody else can just buy it, you know. I and you have to have the card that is at the end of that. Yeah, yeah. Or something. And the thing is, is like I think that they should do a thing where yeah, you complete the quest and you get the card no matter what. It's a holographic card that says Master Wizard, or you can get the card and a collectible pin. You know, yeah. it's like you you get the card no matter what, but you can also get more for your buck and. I also think that it's a good idea to even do the thing where it's a, a lesser pin, and sure, it'll cost them a lot to make, but if somebody's pin, spending hundreds of dollars to just get that one pin, you're going to make your money's worth from that guy just constantly coming back Yeah. to try sure. to get the wizard pin, you know? I mean, I would do that. Well, if yeah, I was that close thing. to getting the wizard pin, I was level four wizard, and I needed one more level, I'd be like, I'm going to pay 30 more bucks and go get the pin. Well, that's the thing is that they had these awesome collectible pins that you can get for completing these quests. It would entice me to go much more, like... I would want to go back and try to earn. And if you just, it's almost like you can save your progress. Like your quest will still be there. Like you, know, you have that be, card. Yeah. It's like, if you have that card, it's like you just l- go from where you left off. So if you have to leave, you're like, ah, oh, close parks closing. I'm on the fourth step of a five step quest. You come back and you have the card. Later, you have so the card. You're on the same. You can, you can go where you left off. Exactly. And like, Boom. And See, then I like that because then that. you don't have to feel so detrimented. Almost like it's a battle royale where like once it's over, it's over. And I have to restart when I come back. That way you, you save your progress. You come back and you're like, you get right back into the world and you're like, okay, I'm at this point in the quest, you know? Mm-hmm. And even on, if well, it's, it's cool like... cool is they could do like limited pins. Like this one's only available for Aurora. This yeah. One, this and one's then, only like, available the, for and Aurora changes 20. changes the next time Aurora comes and then It's the, the yeah, 2018 it's gone, Aurora pin. The 2019 yeah. Aurora pin. Yeah. 2019 Wizard Aurora. 2019 Night Aurora. 2019 oh my Night gosh. Aurora. They could make so much money and people would, like, people like us, I want that kind of stuff. Even just thinking well, about it, I'm edition. like, ooh, I want Limited that. edition is such a popular thing in Disney parks. If you're a Disney uh, pin collector, I'm a, I'm a pretty big Disney pin collector. Limited editions are important. Like, they're huge. Like, it, there's only so many made. So if they had stuff like that, people are going to want them. People like limited oh my gosh, stuff. Yeah. They're like, there's only five. Because then you imagine, only get dude, these for three months and be, you had to do all the quests. Imagine how yeah. cool. It would almost be rat race-esque. You, you would be competing against other people yeah. trying to complete the quest yeah, first. What if they're like, there's this because it's in limited pin. quantity. What if they're like, there's this exclusive pin and there's only a hundred of them? And you like have to complete 500. the whole quest. And it's the longest quest we've ever made. And there's like all these teams going. They're like getting the, they're slaying the dragon. They're getting the gold. And then, they could, they could straight up. Oh my gosh. You could build guilds within the park yourself. Like we could be start our own <laughs> guild. Like so cool. we, we are the dark masters. That'd be sick. Like we are the dark masters. And you could trade oh, your no, gold you know for other pieces of stuff. They need oh to set gosh. up. They need to have on their website, Evermore Park. They need to have like the Evermore Park. Uh, people, Evermore Park guilds or profiles and you can set up your own profile on evermore.com on the profile it would be cool if you can like set up where you're at to yeah. like I, I, they am, wouldn't even... I am on the fourth quest of becoming a blah 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 who wants to join my guild you can join my guild by simply answering this question who whose side do you Dude, follow they are could... you on the acolytes or whatever and if someone's like I'm on the acolytes it's like okay perfect you can join Dude, the dark man exactly they could have see all this open air right here they could legit make a little extra area right there and call it the guild, the guild market. 
and you go in there and if you want me and you and Hazen could literally sit there and wait for people to come and like you all just gather and you can even like just sit down there's like chairs and people can come to you and be like you have like your sign you can like bring stuff and be like yeah you join the brotherhood or you can even like trade stuff you could be a trader and be sitting there and be like I have six pieces of gold you know what can you trade me and they'll be like I have this card anyway I think that I think we've worn it out (laughs) yeah I think I think that's about (laughs) it for Evermore but uh if you want to check it out, it's in Parks or not Parks, Pleasant, uh, Grove. Pleasant Grove, Utah. And uh, real fast, would you guys recommend it? What are your kind of where would you say um, you stand with recommending it to people? Have they? Do you know if they've changed? Have they completed? So here's where I stand. I yeah. say I recommend it once it's built. Yeah. Mm. I now us we're so close. I think we should go before it's built again. Obviously. Yeah. Um, but I think once it's built. It's going to be worth it, especially if they add some of the stuff we talked about, like the pins, that whole collecting system just seems insane. Awesome. Like, yeah. I would go once a month. You like, know? Let, I, I agree. I think wait it out, you know, wait it out, see when they finish it, see what they add. And I mean, it's so interesting. You could go whenever, you know, they could be halfway done with the new stuff and just go, you know, um, I would say right now, if it's not finished. If you're not a crazy nerdy person like us and you're not into this kind of stuff, don't go. You're it's not gonna be worth your while. I mean, somebody like our parents didn't really enjoy it. Um, but if you're like us and you're really into games, you're really into games like Skyrim, you're really into just fantasy in general, go. Go experience it now. You don't you know, we don't know what the future holds. If you're they close. could go out of yeah. Well, they, could, they could go out of business. Thing, people yeah. like we're talking on YouTube here. Oh, yeah. You know, people who come anywhere. from New York. Yeah. Like, you, and, and wait till it's done. But that's once again, it, if you're in Utah, I recommend you go. Yeah. But then again, if you're in even like Denver, yeah. wait it out. I'm with you. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Yeah. Everything you just said. I think for for me, I 100 percent recommend it if you live in Salt Lake or Utah County or around within you know 50 miles or 100 miles. Like, yeah. or I'd say like even enough. if you're in like St. George and you're coming down for us like a yeah. Like if a you're four in day Utah, vacation, come down and try. Exactly. If you're in Utah, I think it's totally worth well, it. Look, I think it's totally worth it to check it out. If you're outside the state, I don't recommend it yet. Well, I think I think you need to wait a little bit longer for it to be um, complete. Complete more, and not even fully complete, but have like the characters developed, the characters and developed, and all the world developed a little bit more. I think if you're outside the state and you're looking forward to it, I would say give it. I don't know. Maybe a, a year, year, a year or a little less than a year, and I think you would be good. I think by then they should have it figured out a bit more. But if you live in Utah, I 100% think you should try it out. I think it's worth it. See, mm-hmm. I, I agree, but... And it's cheaper tickets right now. Yeah. It's not like 30 bucks. That That's the thing. is I, I agree, but also at the same time, I think if you were at all interested in this right now, about what we were just talking about, about the park itself, we don't know what the future holds. Evermore could shut down tomorrow. They could yeah. run out of money. You could. And if you are... Like you said, close or even just barely out of the way, and you really are interested in this, go to it now. You don't know if it could be gone. It'd be so sad if it shut down. Yeah, and that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's we what's opened sad. for a few months and uh, we can't find it. It was yeah. eight years of development and now we're <laughs> yeah. down. And I would It'd never. Like, it's just like a ghost town now. And I, I'm telling you what, it was not a waste of money. It was a great experience, and I would totally do it again. And so I, I would hope that people get to experience it. Before, I'm excited to do it during the it. summer when it's warmer. Yeah. And it like warm summer night, like a warm summer night when oh. we're not cold and we can just run around. Granted, it wasn't even cold when we went. It was cold. Remember? I don't remember. It was cold. It was like, it wasn't cold like it is now, obviously, but it was chilly. It was like chilly enough to where it was like, oh, it's going to be nice when we can get kind of warmed up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, I think just like as, as a final thing, I would say. Like if you're nerdy, if you're into this kind of stuff, do it. If not, then don't, don't, yeah. don't do it. You know, wait. Another recommendation I think they could uh, work on or add is more sitting resting areas mm-hmm. because they didn't have a lot. They have a few areas around By the side the with like fires, yeah. like little bonfires that you can sit around, but not enough that house is like more than five. Parents are going to be taking their kids, exactly. I, things, yeah. and those parents are going to want to sit down. Mm-hmm. I did notice a couple of extras though that weren't even lit that they were working on still. Well, yeah, and that's you know, over idea. by like the river area where the bridge was, there but was I, like a couple that. What I think lit. they need though is like the tavern is super cool, and if imagine if they had a tavern or a dining hall that was double or triple in size of what their tavern their was they have right now, and, and there's seats and tables that people Food. can actually go sit on. When you go in the tavern, 
it's so awesome looking, but it's so incredibly claustrophobic. And there's no like seats. there are so many people in there. Well, there's what no could seats. happen is it could you know they could finish all this development and the park just kind of opens. So you're not like as crammed as we were in this because there yeah. was a lot. That wasn't oh yeah, if, if yeah. the whole Think park was open, that, it would be so much less. Crammed. There's not going to be as many people in that tavern as there will because there's the whole there's rest be, of the park. There's going to be thirty other buildings that people are going to be. In. I mean, yeah, true. It, yeah like it, it, it may have been crammed when we went. But that's because half the park was gone. Imagine half those people are gone. Well, I just want. I I think it would be so cool to be able to go into the tavern, have it be like 15 people in there and be able to walk up to the barkeeper and actually be able to order and there's a, a stool and you can food. like sit there like, i want to i want to be able to kick the door open though yeah you can do that too right? <laughs> exactly and then like raid the place and rob it well see like, stuff like that glasses down stuff like that would be cool if like you can walk in and actually sit down have a conversation with the barkeep and like order like get give me a butter beer or something like that you sit down just able to drink it enjoy it sitting with a yeah. random dwarf talk to him it's a- figure out some quest lines by doing that by actually sitting down and relaxing because i felt like when we went in the tavern it was so like get in a line we got to wait for the hunter it felt He's talking to tedious. 50 people it so felt tedious. we're just gonna kind of sit here i'm gonna, gonna kind of try and sneak yeah in. It's yeah like, we exactly. wanted to almost get out of there as soon as we got in because it was so like we were it felt tedious it was like i want to see all this stuff but there's so many people well there's so many people and it was just cramped yeah. like it just was very claustrophobic. But it's funny that you brought up that thing about kicking in the door. As stupid as it sounds, I just thought of something else they could do where you could, if you wanted so to. glass bottles. No, you could, if you wanted to, <laughs> go into the tavern and be like, you know, give me the gold you have now. Like, otherwise I'll threaten you. And then you take the gold, they give it to you, and then you're wanted. And then anybody, no, anybody else in the no, park could. Not, I, mean, I just thought another thing. But anybody in the park, <laughs> if they wanted to, could capture you and that would get the be reward. Cool. Oh, and that'd be cool is if you yeah. can join the bounty hunters guild. And then imagine you, you, you find you can find people, and it would be cool if you just rob and random people on the street. <laughs> well, do you know how cool it'd be if, like, if you decided to be a villain in the park? It'd be cool if you could have that option, but you'd have to in order to play along and have fun. You'd have to wear, like, a red scarf or like a re- something to symbolize yeah that well, even even guy. as stupid as it sounds they could add something where you had you have like a you red glow stick you have a red wristband yeah and that means you are on the run you are a villain you are a bad guy and so if you're a bounty hunter you become a bounty hunter you can go up to that person and take them into a brig well and imagine like, though like a gel system. imagine that you can become so notorious you're like, like, I villain. gotta leave the park. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, like, oh, you know, it could be if you could like take him, lock him up in a gel, but all the gels have an escape like hatch, and you so can they, escape. They, you could escape and get out, and it's like he's back on the run. But like, you'd be sick, but you it... get paid as the bounty hunter yeah. to take him to gel. It would you be get cool. Paid, like ten gold. And then as soon as you get in there, you can you can just leave. Escape. Yeah. So but, it's like but what would be cool is like still. you could even become so notorious, you could rob multiple places in a row that you have enough money to hire other people to work for you. And guard then you, you. Yeah. Then sick. you become more notorious as this villain, as this, the gray fox, like in Oblivion, where you're like the head bandit, you know? People get scared. Like, you walk into the tavern, and the barkeeper's immediately like, just take it and go. And then there's, you see, like, there's a ton of people in the tavern, and they're like, there he is. And then you start, like, running. Like, yeah, they could sick. do, like, a color coded awesome. system for, like, yeah. your wanted level and your danger. And level. if you're a bounty so hunter, awesome. you have to wear, like, a green one. Well, that'd be cool. It's like, yeah, if you're a bounty hunter, you have these green bands you have to wear. And you're respected you, and, like, yeah, and people will come up to you and if you be, see someone like, with a green band. So let's say you're you. let's say you're just a common folk or a knight or something and you're walking around and a villain comes and robs you, he's like, Give me your stuff and you have to give it to him. You can tell you can somebody find with someone band. with a green band, you can go like, Hey, I will pay you two doubloons to find this person and get my money back or something mm-hmm. like that and I'll pay you to do that and then if he can go do that or whatever like stuff like that would that'd be, be really sick cool. and then you could that's level, uh, going into that leveling up system once again where oh, you could oh. slowly become what better you do too is a they, level 5 bounty hunter if they had get... an evermore app with the profiles you could be like oh. the guy could be like what does he look like the bounty hunter's like what does he look like and you pull up his profile and it has his alias it has his alias well, and his picture and, and it's, it's like, like he looks like this it's it's, and then, it's the gray bandit well, and it's like a wanted poster it's like his, yeah, and he's like, under a wanted poster, and it's him standing. Because once you, like, and if you, because like that, if you do get caught and arrested before you escape, they take like a picture of you on a cell phone and then upload it to the site. That way, it's like wanted this bounty this much, and it's like posted on like wanted screens. this bounty ten gold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, ten gold. But it would be sick because then, like in the main hub in like the town, they could have screens on the walls. 
that display wanted posters. Or like, oh, and then if you yeah. see them in the wild, you're well, like, they can do like, I uh, found them. You know how like in movie theaters nowadays they have the movie poster sections that aren't real movie posters. Yeah, but they're, like, they're, ele- they're an electronic screen. They could just do stuff like that where it changes like Harry Potter and like the images move and it's like wanted and it shows like wanted. the person like ah like yeah yellow, like you if you contact become, this bounty hunter. If you hunter. become a villain. You can go and they have this area that kind of breaks the fourth wall, but it's like they'll take your picture. You can go up and be like, "Hey, I became a villain. Can I get my?" But they wouldn't even have taken? to break the fourth and they wall. Can, well, and I'm saying no. I'm saying the area is breaking the fourth right, wall because right. it's a person who's like taking your picture in well, a fantasy world. Granted, they could I'm just saying. do something as simple as when you get taken to jail, they make it seem like it's like a magical box, and they're like RFID, like and, and then they, your wristband has RFID. Yeah. And then, like, you connect your profile. You have to have a picture of yourself. You yeah. connect your profile. Oh, you can scan exactly. it. Every time like you go to jail, you have to scan, scan it. it in. Yeah. And then put you sick. up as a wanted person. And then after and you then... escape, you're wanted. And Ooh. every time, every Dude, this is so every time cool. you rob a new place, you have to scan the thing, and then it raises or your. Or the balance. RFID could be used for literally everything. If you get the wizard pin and you become a wizard, you scan their thing, and that shows on your profile you are a wizard. And so it says scanned it in. So you can't just lie about it. You actually. But have to scan it can it can even be like as cool as where you are multiple things where you could scan it in and you're wanted you're it's like wanted level five master wizard also has slain the faking this many reward and it shows you and you're like and that'd be sick like mm-hmm. you have all these different like names and uh what people know you as and all your different accomplishments and what, what's the word um accolades accolades like all your different accolades of what you've mm-hmm. done and then people are like oh crap this guy's dangerous like i gotta watch out for him you know yeah because that'd be sick and everybody has these wristbands to where if somebody does get robbed they ha- you have to interact like that like, if you rob somebody, you have to scan their thing. That way it says that they've been robbed. It notifies, like, bounty hunters. It tells you that your bounty gets raised. Like, it'd be See, sick. yeah, they totally could. With RFID, that'd be perfect. That was a great idea, Jason. Yeah. Like, they're... Evermore, if you're listening, freaking... This, this I is want to send ideas. this to him and be like, dude, just... <laughs> Actually, not free. Can you hire us? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Imagineer. Yeah. Like, All right, us over here. Like, yeah. honestly, like, I'd love for them to hire us. But even if they did it for free, like, I'd just like to see this stuff yeah, this, implemented. Yeah, this would be awesome. Yeah. All right, well, I think that wraps up. This is making a park in our dreams. Imagine if, like, we next summer they're like, yeah, RFID enabled uh, <laughs> bounty like, system. And there's RFID. Every, <laughs> every single thing we said, and we're like, uh, yeah. well, I'm really excited to go to this park, but I'm really kind of angry. I'm actually now. angry because they literally stole all of our eggs. <laughs> we're making a new clan called the Super Evermore Bros. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, like, what the uh, show on the nose. Can we be the president? And the, the, no. song, the song's like, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Why, why would they have a song? Like my, are, are no, no, I know. Yeah, I know. Like, why are they playing a song? I don't know. They're, they're playing on like my... Like, <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Well, I think that wraps it up for Evermore. Um, like we were saying, I think we all recommend it if you're in the state of Utah. Um, if you're outside the state, give it a year and then I think it would be worth it. I think it would be worth checking out. Um... But next time we go, we'll do an update. Yeah, next time we go, we're planning to go in the summer, I think for sure, which is the Mythos, and we'll do an update then, talk about what we thought of the Mythos. I think event. spring would kind of be cool, and then maybe a little bit later into summer. I don't know if they're doing a spring event, though. So well, we like still haven't seen the winter one. Oh, that's true. They're still doing the winter one. That'd be cool. Yeah. For sure. Aurora. Um, but uh, we'll let, we'll be sure to keep you, uh, keep you guys in touch with that. We'll let you know going forward what happens with Evermore. If you want to follow Evermore for yourself... Uh, they have a website, evermore.com, or you can follow them on social media. They have some really cool stuff. Some of the stuff I've seen, they uh, post on their social media. They'll post yeah. like uh, statues in progress mm-hmm. and stuff like that. And some of it looks really awesome. So if you want to see some cool Lord of the Rings-esque, Game of Thrones-esque uh, stuff, check them out. Um, let's go ahead and move on to uh, a little bit of news for you guys this week. Um, we finished our big topic and they're, this week, the last couple of weeks have been pretty crazy in terms of uh, news, especially in the world of video games. So we're going to start out with uh, one that's a little sad, but also um, kind of cool news. Not cool, but uh, Reggie fils the president of Nintendo of America, has officially retired. He is, uh, it'll be effective in April, so he's still the president until April, and then in April he will be retiring, and he will be handing the reins over to Bowser to replace him as the president of America and Nintendo. How could I'm not even lying. Isn't that crazy? I'm not even lying. <laughs> That's the, so weird. His name, so the guy who is taking over as president of Nintendo America is Doug Bowser, is his name, which is hilarious. Like... What are the odds? <laughs> the new president's going to be Mario. The new president of Nintendo is Bowser. 
Um, he, he's been with Nintendo for and a now while. Now the new so president of Sony is Mario. Is, uh, <laughs> is Nathan Drake. <laughs> yeah, the head of Sony is Nathan Drake. I saw somebody tweet out, uh, I think it was Drace, Jason Schreier, he t- tweeted out, he's like, man, I can't wait for the new uh, Activision um, president Steve loot boxes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more like the EA president. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Uh, but yeah, Steve was microtransactions. <laughs> yeah, Steve, give me all your money. <laughs> Steve, we will not buy any more of your games until you have no more loot boxes. <laughs> yeah, oh, wait. The, I'm the next, buy Anthem. The next president <laughs> of uh, Microsoft is... Uh, Phil Master Chief. <laughs> Did you see though um, the picture of the new president Bowser and he's like, I can't wait or something. And then oh, in yeah, the background yes, yeah. there's Mario yeah. and Luigi tied up. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny. Yeah. And that was actually his picture was for when he was first uh, hired by Nintendo. Oh, okay. That wasn't for his president thing, but yeah, when he was I think first hired by Nintendo, he took a picture and they said like, thank you for welcoming to Nintendo. I'm excited. And, and the, because his name is Doug Bowser, he had behind did he, him, he was had, that purposeful? Two, yeah, he did it on purpose. Okay, okay. There's two stuffed animals of uh, Mario and Luigi wrapped up ra- in a, a GameCube controller, like <laughs> tied up. <laughs> it was really yeah. funny. But um, it's kind of sad news because Reggie has honestly been the face of Nintendo, especially in America, for uh, 16 years now. Um and I freaking love Reggie. Reggie's such such a nice guy. He really um, I mean, embodies, it's the end of an era. It, it really is. He embodies Nintendo to me. I grew up watching Reggie uh, on all the E3 presentations. I mean, we haven't known anything else besides Reggie. Honestly. Yeah, all the. I mean, I mean, not counting like Awada or Miyamoto. But or I'm something. talking as far as the American, the American ones for sure. It's and it's sad to see him go because he really has that innocence and family friendly voice of nintendo yeah. and, and he, he is one friendly. of the faces yeah. of nintendo like yeah when you think of the nintendo people you think of reggie i mean he's probably the most widely known out of all like miyamoto iwata and reggie and, and, he's, and american audiences. as far as america yeah it's it's reggie all the way yeah he's imagine, always e3 maybe phil spencer it's, oh wait well, we're talking it's nintendo, nintendo okay. yeah, yeah it's it's reggie all the way like when he's always e3 he's always a uh, he was at the Game Awards, I'm pretty sure. When mm-hmm. they all three came out, yeah. Yeah, when they all three, yeah, when they all three came out at the Game Awards, it was uh, Phil Spencer, Reggie, Reggie Fils-Aimé, and then uh, Frick. The Sony. I, I always forget his name. I know his name, but I'm blanking on it right yeah. now. Um, but yeah, I, I watching his retiring video. I'm not gonna lie, I almost teared up because it was really sad. He's such I a nice seen guy, it. and it's just two minutes of him like talking and just him thanking the fans and like thanking him. He's like. I appreciate. I want you to know that I am always a Nintendo man or something like that. He's like, I mean, it was just really sad. And it was like really heartwarming. <laughs> and I was just like, Dude, don't make me cry. But he's uh, 56. It looks like, and he's retiring or 57, and that's a pretty good age to be retiring at. Oh my gosh! So, yeah. um, he does not to him. look 56. No. Yeah, he, and he, he said looks he was, like he's in his forties. And the good news is, is he's not leaving the company to go join another company. He's retiring, like he is ending it with Nintendo, which is really cool. Um, he says he want the only reason he's retiring is because he wants to be able to spend time with his family and just be able to relax because he's been working really hard the last, you know, sixteen years with Nintendo as the president of America, which is pretty. Pretty oh, some heavy good job. times with the Wii and some bad times with the Wii U. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And then some <laughs> and then good times with the Wii. And I'm glad he's able to end it on a high note with That's the Switch. Switch. It's like, not like he retired during the Wii yeah. U. And if like, he retired uh, during the Wii U, everyone would know it's because, oh, you're just trying to get out because it sucks. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, congratulations to Reggie. It's a little sad, but uh, cool. Good for him, too. Um, our next piece of news is really interesting. This is pretty crazy. So we were talking a little bit about this before the, uh, before the podcast, but... Uh, Apparently, there's a rumor going on right now that Xbox Game Pass will be joining the Nintendo Switch, <laughs> which is crazy. So I think we talked about it maybe last week. On I think we mentioned it. But if we didn't, there was rumors a few weeks ago that Xbox Live will be joining the Nintendo Switch as, as well, meaning you'll be able to unlock achievements on the Xbox playing Nintendo games and stuff like that, and also have your literally your Xbox account on your Nintendo Switch, and it all be connected, which is pretty crazy. Yeah. And then... Now, the rumor is Xbox or Microsoft is planning to add a Xbox Game Pass app that allows you, allows you to stream, it sounds like, every Xbox Game Pass game on your Nintendo Dude, Switch. Dude, that is wild. It's That's way crazy. wild. crazy. It's nuts. Like, I'm telling you what, their relations right now, 
Oh my gosh, it's rev- like it's this hot. is it's this so is hot. I know, but no, like this is <laughs> this is huge step. Like we've never had this happen in the gaming industry. No, two never people in- work together so much like them. I don't think there's ever been two companies like this it, it, working so well together in, in modern together. history. Honestly, oh no, yeah, like because like they people can't lie. Of course, Xbox and PlayStation are the rivals, but Nintendo's part of that. Like, they still compete, but now... Well, Nintendo's always just been one to do their own thing. Right. They've like, been they very neutral. they don't care what anyone else mm-hmm. is doing. They've kind of been, like, there, on the side. Xbox and PlayStation are very similar in every way. Like, in terms of power and in terms of... Uh, but Nintendo's its own thing. Thing like that. But Nintendo's always been just like, we're going to do whatever we want. We're going to do a handheld hybrid system that yeah. you can play on the go with Mario games. It's like, they just do their own thing. I think what happened was Microsoft saw the opportunity because they saw... That Nintendo dominates the portable the arena. Like, no chance. PS Vita, mobile, no. They don't even compete. Yeah. It, and so... Well, mobile's its own thing. Yeah, yeah, but I think Microsoft saw that opportunity because they've never come out with a portable. And they've always been very close with Nintendo as far as, like, cross-playing stuff. That they, I, I'm I'm glad they're taking this step because one thing is, is I could never see Xbox making a portable. It would be weird. They're not used to it. They've never done it I've before. always wanted them to. I've always wanted them to, but just imagine. Like, it'd be weird. And so I'm glad that they're doing this instead. They're they're just relinquishing it to the experts. Instead of trying to do like a PS Vita and then eventually flop and be garbage, they're actually just relinquishing power to a We really talked good. about this a long time ago where it was like, well, are they going to make an Xbox handheld thing? Like, when are they going to do it? Mm-hmm. And this now is they don't it. have this to. Yeah, yeah, this is their handheld. And that is a smart point that it's like, yeah, I, I think this is a great move by Microsoft if you think about it because it's like, yeah, Let's hand over the handheld space to the experts, which is Nintendo. Nintendo. Why owns, try to compete with? Why them? try to make cool their own? And they can they just make join the Nintendo. Xbox controllers work. Well, that's Switch. that's a rumor too. Actually, I, I think that I read. I think somewhere that that's part of the rumor too. Is that your con- Xbox controller will be able to hook up right. to your awesome. Switch? Well, well, first hopefully, of all, Xbox is the superior controller over for sure. any controller that I think it's ever of been made. Yeah, well, did I you agree. know that the Xbox One X controller is Bluetooth? So I'm hoping that with the Switch 2.0 that's hopefully being revealed at like E3 is that they have, oh, they come out and they're like, yeah, we now have built-in Bluetooth, built-in 4G to where like you can just Bluetooth your Xbox controller right in and then you can play freaking anything you want to go, you know? It's just nuts to think about. It's so crazy to think that potentially by next year we could be playing Halo Infinite on the Nintendo Switch. What universe... Did that, like, how did this happen? <laughs> Dude, you could be playing Halo Infinite. You could play, be playing Sea of Thieves on the toilet. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Yeah. Ne- well, I can do that like, now if I bring my TV in. Yeah. <laughs> what I mean is, like, you've never had this possible. Because, like, Nintendo's always had their own games. They've never had a lot of the AAA titles. A lot of AAA titles don't even... Well, they have their own AAA titles. Right. They don't have the, the main commercialized ones, like Call of Duty and stuff like that. They have the Assassin's four. Creed. Never done as good, but they're starting to. They already announced that they're bringing, like, Assassin's Creed to the Switch. They're doing maybe doing this Xbox thing. Like, they're making these big strides because... I think both companies realized where their flaws are. Yeah. And they realized that they can just combine and they can be strong as one. And they're going to, oh, if they do this, it's going to Xbox dominate. keeps the way, like with Xbox Game Pass, the Xbox online service that's apparently coming out, the, you know, if this is actually true, Xbox is going to dominate the next generation Dude, the way PS4 did this generation. Not yeah, only I that, agree. think about it. Xbox being on Switch means that backwards compatibility for the Xbox on Switch, we could be playing Gauntlet Dark Legacy on our switches yeah it's Walking nuts around. like That's sick and as you said it, this really does i think in a way it benefits both parties yeah. if you really think about it because it's like yeah nintendo the truth is nintendo has always struggled being the powerhouse they are not the power especially the they, power console yeah the, well that's what i mean by powerhouse is like they don't have the power inside this switch like the switch doesn't run 4k <laughs> right. freaking like like, like the xbox like the xbox one the X. xbox and ps4 will come out and they'll be like we got 4k hdr all this shit and then then we use come like we're the we're Wii. 720p <laughs> we have 720p and <laughs> we don't play dvds yeah, exactly yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so, they, so they've always struggled with that so nintendo if it benefits nintendo because it's like hey we don't have to worry about even porting all these big games onto our console we can just have xbox do it for us and have the xbox app on there xbox pays us to have the xbox app on there and then they xbox, do all the work yeah and, and then we get X, money yeah and then xbox makes and the we money both from benefit people. 
and then Xbox makes the money from people buying Game Pass subscriptions. And dude, I wouldn't even on, be surprised if we see a Nintendo Online app appear on the Xbox. Like, yeah. You never know because like if they're working so close together, not only this, but this connects. You have so Xbox well. Live and Nintendo Online. Which one do you choose? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like you. Nintendo Online. <laughs> no, I mean, like but to where you can connect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, where you can connect. We're basically Smash Bros with your Xbox controller, but like. Um, you can already do that technically. But. Well, yeah, but I, I mean, it, this also connects so well with the rumor that the new Switch that's coming out is going to be purely portable. It would work so well because if they're doing that, they're ditching the console idea because. If the Xbox thing's on there, they know that it's going to work out with that. They don't need to try for the console anymore. Because if they're doing what they supposedly are rumored to do, where they're having no console at all, they won't need to. Because then they'll have the Xbox as their console. Well, they'll need a console, though, to be able to play like, well, course, Smash course, Brothers course. on the big screen. Of course, yeah. Right? Or Mario Watch. And that's why I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of Nintendo app on the Xbox. Where you can just stream your Switch through your Xbox. Which you can kind of already do. You just yeah. plug that HDMI in. That's a good point. I, I tell you what, exciting things are happening in terms of Microsoft and, and Nintendo, like, buddying up like this. As we were saying, I I don't remember one of the big three getting along like this ever mm. before. It's it's nuts. It's unprecedented. And I feel it's like really cool. some of them have always tried. I know, like, Xbox has usually congratulated PlayStation on their E3, and then E3, <laughs> PlayStation doesn't say anything. Well, or Play- Nintendo, no, PlayStation doesn't or, say Or PlayStation will say something to Nintendo, and then they won't say anything back. Or I think they always say stuff back. What I mean is, like, I feel like they've always wanted these kind of relations. It's, where, well, it's all just PR. It's like, yeah, yeah let's say we're let's work friends, together, but yeah. really they're not. Like, right, of course. At the end of the day, they're competitive. But this one is, I think this is different than that. This is less of like, oh, this is for PR and stuff. This is more like they genuinely think this is a good idea well it's in industry. the bo- best interest of both parties oh my gosh I think. yeah like i think it benefits both what's parties? the word because you know, there's like the the different type of relationships like they're mutually beneficial like instead of one mm-hmm. being the parasite and getting all the benefits you know yeah. they're both benefiting equally one's getting the best console and then going to the experts for portable and then the the portable experts are going to the console experts for you know and so yeah it's uh, really nuts it this also only heightens my hopes that we get banjo for. Smash. I was just thinking. Like that. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't know. It. I'm, I don't think it's gonna happen. Still, just because. I played banjo. If you hated it. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys missed Hasten's stream, check it out on uh, Mixer. Right. Mixer. Yeah, because Hasten had Save to stream there. three hours of the original banjo kazooie. You seemed like you were having fun though. I mean, you made it to the pirate island. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you were like if you if stuff. you would have been well, I were playing for three hours. I had to do something. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it gives me a lot of hope that we might get banned over Smash and maybe even more Xbox repre- representatives in Smash Bros. Like, like that Master Chief. Who freaking knows? Maybe we'll get Master Chief in Smash. Even just that knows. Master Chief skin for Steve or whatever, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so, I would even be surprised. I mean, they they. I was right on a guess. Were you? Wasn't I? Who'd you guess? Who's, who's coming out? Who's rumored to come out? A rumor? No, we joked about... We told you that you got one right and that you didn't. Who was it? John Madden. John Madden. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And yeah, did you yeah, actually yeah. believe it? No, no, no. Uh, okay. No. Just I forgot. just remembered. Yeah. That you guys were like, <laughs> oh, I was right. John Madden's coming. <laughs> I don't think I actually even guessed that. I, think I don't think we, I think we all joked yeah. about it. But I think maybe... Did you say Doom Guy? No, what I said is? Doom Guy. Did you? Yeah, but Doom Guy is not Xbox exclusive. Well, no, I'm not saying he's Xbox. Oh, so I'm just oh. saying as the one. No one wants Doom guy. <laughs> I, I thought Hasten. I would like Doom guy. Doom guy cool. is sick. Yeah, they can make a Smash Ball where he turns the to the the, the bit thing and he's like got the shotgun. It's like, yeah, it's almost like Bowser. It'd be ridiculous for Smash Ball. It'd be crazy just to think. That. But if it was <laughs> but if it was eight bit, it would be less violent. Yeah, but um, sure. real quick, I wanted to bring something up about um, as far as the relations. One thing uh, Nintendo announced in their latest. Nintendo Direct, which we didn't talk about. Uh, in the Nintendo Direct, they announced that Assassin's Creed 3, w- along with Liberation, is being remastered on the Switch, which is dope, mm. because we've never had that, right? On the Switch, we're going to be able to play Assassin's Creed 3, which it's, it, it it's was weird one, to me that it was still... Assassin's Creed 3, but it's the one of the best. It's one of the fun ones. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the best. And, and plus, me and Hasten really like it. I know it, not a ton of people like it. And I think it's going to be one of the ones that will run the best on the Switch. You yeah, because it's like, older. And, and the thing is, is like I think I don't know if the Switch would be able to necessarily handle as well like, like Black kinda like, Flag. It's kind of like like Skyrim can go on anything now. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? So like back in those days, like, so that like was any, a huge game. Yeah, if, if you can get Skyrim on the Switch, you anything get, oh. pre-2011, you better be able to get oh, yeah. on the Switch. Because Skyrim is Even pre-2012. Um, yeah. but speaking of that, like the fact that they added that Assassin's Creed, maybe with the relations with Xbox, they could even 
do like a remaster Halo 3, Halo 2. Like, oh, Halo 2 is coming to the Switch. Like, that'd be huge, you know? This is just such a crazy future we're living in. Right I know. Now. Like, like what, how we've never been able to fathom this like, kind of actually stuff. happening at E3 this year. It's all about this year. cloud gaming stuff. You I know. Because like, this is like dreams we've had. Where we're, but, like, it could be reality. I know. That's this the thing year. is, like, no part of me. And th- once again, grain of salt. This is still a rumor. But right. it is looking so real. Like, from the stuff we've been seeing and from the rumors, it seems like it's almost. If, if it's confirmed. not true, like, it's they not, missed but, out so big time like if they didn't follow through with this because even if it wasn't true and then they saw the rumors i would hope they would do it because of the rumors because i feel like it's so obviously beneficial for both like it's so obviously so much money to be fair there also can be downsides but But we'd have to really think about how many people are gonna buy the effing switch if you can play xbox no i know yeah think about how many people are gonna buy an xbox if you can play your switch think about how many people will buy xbox game pass Mm -hmm. if you can game pass imagine xbox live with all this cloud gaming service imagine like you being able to download the cloud service on your laptop which any like this one and just being able to play your games with a, a 19 inch screen yeah. yeah with a uh xbox one controller in yeah. your hand yeah and that's part of the rumor too like apparently x the plan for x cloud at least from what people are understanding with microsoft's x cloud is that it's supposed to be able to work on mobile on laptops on anything it's supposed to be you can stream it on any device and be able to play that has the compatible and so, app and so that's why this only supports this rumor more is because if nintendo if xbox really means that then they could put it on Nintendo Switch, well, and you just stream yeah, it on there. If they the, put it on the PS4. Yeah. Well, what they talked about when when they announced I don't think Sony would allow that. when they announced the uh, Xbox Cloud thing, I remember them saying it would be like an app, right? So yeah. it had to work with compatible devices. So that's why something like the Switch already has many apps. It has Netflix, and YouTube, and stuff like that. It could have Xbox, and it would be, of course, like the PlayStation thing would never happen. Like that'd be ridiculous if all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, you can get the Xbox." I never thought. Like, I never thought. Never buy a PS4. That's true. Great point. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, and who knows if Xbox comes out comes out and dominates the next generation? They might just do PlayStation it. PlayStation might be like, okay, I guess we'll do Let's it. Let's all just work together. Okay, we do that, that now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, maybe because we see that there's money. You stupid Americans. <laughs> that, I mean, that's everyone besides Xbox. <laughs> Xbox would be the only American company there. But uh, another thing that's uh, interesting about this is apparently Ori in the Blind Forest is supposed to be the debut game for it. And it's going to be just officially released on the Switch. So rather than be part of the Game Pass lineup... So for example, I don't think it's likely that Halo will be available to buy on the Nintendo right. Switch eShop. You It'll be stream. through the streaming you, you, you download the Xbox Game Pass app, and then you click on that, and then it has all the Game Pass games Real, yeah. streamed through Real Microsoft. quick, to clarify, disclaimer... We are not saying that Xbox game will be Xbox games will be ported to the Switch. Yeah, or like be able We to are buy saying it. that there is an app that yeah. will be on the Switch that when you click on it, it's basically like putting an Xbox in your Switch. Where you click on that app and then you're streaming to your it's Xbox. It's not even like that. It's like opening up Internet Explorer on as exactly. an app. Exactly. But and then no, it's almost like having a, com- a a camera pointed at your Xbox and live streaming it to your Switch. <laughs> like yeah. to an extent, like I mean, this is once again, this isn't even rumor. Rumor. We're like we don't even know if this will happen. This is but what the rumor. But that's what the rumor is because we're totally not saying that. And these we're games just speculating are too. coming to the Switch. That's not what we're trying to say. But it's what's just, interesting though is Ori in the Blind Forest is rumored. To, to actually, actually be, port. be ported. Okay. To where, like, that Microsoft makes would be releasing it to where you can buy it on the Nintendo eShop. And I could and even it, see them slowly doing that with a lot of games. Well, I wouldn't be surprised if Cuphead does Cuphead, it, Cuphead, Super Meat Boy. Well, I don't think that's Xbox exclusive. It is exclusive. now. It is now. I don't think so. They bought them, I'm pretty sure. It was just on the Epic Games launch. In the most recent uh, X2... X... 2019. XO18. XO18. I'm pretty sure they bought the people mm. who made Super Meat Boy. I don't know about that one, but maybe. I know they bought Obsidian. Well, the thing but, is... Super Meat Boy was just put on the Epic Store, just barely for free. Was it? Yeah. So I don't think that. Yeah, I don't. That, that wouldn't sound right to me. But yeah, and then they point out also, uh, uh, Super Lucky Cell is also on its way to the Switch. So there's a bunch of uh, Xbox games that are already going on the Switch. In fact, in the recent direct we were just watching, uh, Senua's Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice yeah. is coming to the Nintendo Switch. Which I think I started playing it on the Xbox. I think I'm gonna wait. Oh yeah. Get it on the. Well, I don't know if I can get it for free on an Xbox, I guess. But Well, if Game Pass comes to Switch, then... Yeah, then you get free there. Then you get free there. But yeah, so there are there is precedent already for um, Microsoft publishing games on the Switch. Oh, yep. They bought Super, Super Meat Boy. Meat Boy it, it, Super Meat Boy has only been on the 360 and Xbox Live Arcade. 
Are you positive? It came to the PS4. I'm and almost PlayStation positive. Vita. It's on the Switch. And well, then it the came PC. to the Wii U. Now it's on the Switch. Oh, it is on the Switch. It's okay, on the PC, right too. Yeah. I don't think Xbox owns them. Maybe they're a second party, but they're not first party. They came first to 360, though. Well, that doesn't mean they're and first party. party like, I guess they were a timed exclusive, maybe. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Rise of the Tomb Raider came to Xbox first, too. It doesn't mean they own them. Yeah. But uh, next up, uh, so that's a crazy big story. What was next? Let's How long see. are we at? We're at an hour 40. Should we go into uh, Deathmatch? Yeah, probably, if we want to get to it. Yeah, I think so, too. What's the other quick news stories we can go through? Um, the other ones, I'll just spit them out real fast. I just had a couple. Where'd they go? Gotta find what... Oh, uh, Godzilla vs. Kong has been moved up to March next year, which is awesome. That's literally a year away. So many um, things coming before it, though. Yeah. yeah to watch uh, before What is that, May? There's that, plus there's just a ton of other movies coming out. Oh, oh it, yeah, so. I thought you were saying, yeah, the Godzilla. Um, Edgar Wright's Last Night in Soho casts Matt Smith and... Uh, Thomas and McKenzie and Edgar Wright's that's his next movie which is awesome I didn't even know he was working on another movie right now so I'm super excited about that um yeah and that's basically uh, John it. Krasinski posted on I can't remember if it was Twitter or Instagram but he posted that he's like second one coming and it was a picture and he had a picture of like um a house with lights or like out the door oh for Quiet, so Place, Quiet 2? Place 2 nice oh really yeah hey that's all I think maybe on Twitter but yeah, it was really cool Oh, yep, and it looks like a couple of the actors are in talks to return. Yeah. Looks like it's right here, too. That's cool. Uh, do, 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 do. I think that's about it for news. I mean, there's a lot of other news, but we're going to pass on it for now. Oh, quick other one. Uh, Netflix officially canceled the rest of their Marvel lineup. Jessica Punisher. Jones and Punisher have both been axed as well. So no more Marvel on original series on Netflix. Um, it's okay. Anymore. We'll get some next year. Yeah, they'll, Disney. they'll be on some. Or is it this year? Plus, I'm sure. I think it's supposed to be the end of this year. Which is cool. Ooh. Yeah. All right, Taryn, you ready? Oh, uh, another indication real quick about the Xbox thing. That's right. Something we got at the... Because we, we forgot to talk about the Nintendo Direct. Not too much crazy. I mean, we got Super Mario Maker 2. Super Mario Maker 2 is awesome. Um, Link's Awakening. Link's Awakening. We got a demo for um, Crafted World, the Yoshi's Crafted World. But they did announce one game... That is owned by Xbox. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, Hellblade. Hellblade. Well, we literally were just talking about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, but... <laughs> I think you missed oh, I, I did miss it, but that that is huge indication right there. Well, that yeah. is owned by Xbox. Yeah. Now that is owned, yeah. <laughs> you totally must have missed it. I must have missed it. We literally <laughs> but, were yeah, just but saying. I guess I'm getting into it now, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were, that's, that's, as you were looking, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, as you were it wasn't looking super at this, me, me and Nason right? have already discussed this. Because I, rem- <laughs> I knew there was something. I, yeah. I guess it was that, not Super Mario Boy. Yeah. So anyway, uh, also Chris Hemsworth is set to star as Hulk Hogan. Did you guys hear about this uh, in a biopic movie for Netflix? As oh yeah, Hulk I saw Hogan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So why doesn't Hulk Hogan pose as Hulk Hogan? Because <laughs> Hulk Hogan's <laughs> not Hulk Hogan. He's he's old. Hulk uh, Hogan was always old. <laughs> I don't think he was ever. Uh, I mean, he's older now. All right, you guys ready for uh, death match? Yep. Tanner, You're doing Coke and Pepsi. You ready for death match? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Uh, Pepsi. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you didn't know what Deathmatch is, it's where we put up two different brands or things against each other. And the idea of it is we have to decide which one we keep and which one we destroy from existence and wipe away. Uh! And I know it's really dark and sad, and I often don't like to think of one of these things going away, but that's what makes this topic kind of fun in this uh, segment is we have to decide only one. Only one can live while the other disappears from history. And so last week we did a big one, which was uh, Disney versus Nintendo, and we ended up deciding Disney. Uh, we all had to go around the table, and we ended up picking Disney to survive. So we're specifically sticking with uh, the beverages involved with Coca-Cola and Pepsi, and we're determining which one we would keep personally from there. So let's go ahead and jump into it, starting with Coca-Cola. Uh, who wants to take us through some of the ones they have? All right, that is me. So, Coca-Cola. We have, of course, Coke. What? Of course, Coke. Coke owns <laughs> All the Coke? ones that say Coke, they own. So that means Coke and Coke, Diet Coke, Coke and Zero, Coke Zero Coke, and Coke Cherry. Coke's and Coke Max Vanilla. Life. Coke. <laughs> All the Cokes, which Coke and Diet Coke. Which kind and of cocaine. Which, which Pepsi also has. Which, like Pepsi. All I'm saying is yeah. I argue that Diet Coke is bigger than normal Coke at this point. So Diet Coke's the main one. So they should call themselves Diet Coke instead. Diet Coca-Cola. So first of all, they own a, a, a water company named Ciel. I've never heard of them, but they own them. 
Then there's Dasani, which Dasani is the water company. Then there's Vale. I'm going to is... jump out and say this real fast. If you're talking Coke the drink versus Pepsi the drink, Coke I'm Coke way. all the way. Oh, yeah. Coke all the way. So I want to preface with this because when I was looking over some of these, things got really interesting because I'm being honest, when we decided we were doing this for the death match, I was like, this is going to be easy for Coke. me. I was like, Coke all the way. Coke is so much better than but Pepsi. But then when you think about what but they then own. I was, when you what they own uh, beverage-wise, I was like, oh, crap. So things got interesting. So I want to preface with that that I would choose Coke over Pepsi so, any day. But if you go down the list, yeah. things get interesting. I'm going to do the big ones then first. So you've got Coke, yeah. Dasani, Fanta. Then you've got Mellow Yellow, Minute Maid. Fresca. Fresca, Powerade, Simply Orange, Smart Water, Sprite. Oh, Sprite. Big one. Dang. Vitamin Water and... Right here it says Starbucks. I don't know if I trust that. No, I'm not gonna it's we're not, not, we're not counting Starbucks. It's, it's not owned. I it's think it's Starbucks, licensed. It's the Starbucks Frappuccinos, these things. Okay. So it's it's licensed yeah. to Starbucks. Okay. okay. So they don't own them. Which okay. Pepsi also has a license to. Oh, it does It does say license. Okay, so, okay. We're not going to count that. So yeah. Starbucks does not count. Put that aside. But then smaller ones, they have Costa Coffee, Zico. Mr. Pib. Surge. Mr. Pib. Um, Which o- root beer do they Udala, do? Uh, honest tea, gold gold peak tea. They do That's, barks. Gold peaks tea is really it's good. Huge, and they yeah. do barks. That's uh, <gasps> the one Grandma always gets. Oh, the 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 with I the barrel. Barks, yeah. See, I like mug, which is what Pepsi does. I love mug. Mug too, is good but, too, but, but I, I like barks. barks better, honestly. And then they have Georgia coffee, and then Ooh, dude, this is making me want soda. <laughs> I know, dude. Oh my gosh. I don't drink soda, but I, I want it so bad right now. But yeah, and that's that's. That's the main ones, honestly. So, Whew. so should I go now? Oh, man, this is making me. It's taking me back to five, six years ago when I drink soda all the time, and now I want it so bad. I know. Uh, <laughs> um, so this is. Oh, I just found something interesting. Okay, so they Pepsi has Pepsi, which includes all the Pepsi, Pepsi, cherry, Pepsi Max, cherry, Pepsi, whatever. Matches, yeah. um, they also Pepsi have Clear. They also have Mountain Dew, <sighs> which got a little oh, Mountain Dew. They have Pure Leaf Tea. They yeah, have Bubbly. Leaf. Um, oh, which okay. is pretty big, actually. It's like the sparkling. Uh, it's sparkling water, basically. Oh. Um, they have Gatorade. Okay, so real quick. You've got Mountain Dew versus Sprite and Gatorade versus Powerade. So, oh, it's so hard because those are all so good. Which I think all so of us similar. here choose Gatorade. Yeah. Right? No, I, I choose Powerade. Oh, okay. I'm Gatorade. I and do then, love Gatorade, but the specific, those big Powerades. Remember the okay, big this ones? This is where it gets oh. interesting. They own Tropicana, the okay. juice. They own Naked, which is... Really good juice. I don't know if you guys have had it. I'm not a huge fan of it. Insane. They also own Soda Stream, like the Soda Stream machine that you pump your. I can't believe you guys haven't heard of this. (laughs) No. You basically make your own soda. It's huge. Like it's insanely popular. I've never heard of it. That's crazy. Um, They own Lipton iced tea. Lipton's big. Um, I know you like that, right? What? Lipton's the one that Grandma has. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one that Grandpa has. Okay. Um, They own Aquafina. Um, They own Brisk. Actress? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> they own Life Water. They own Sierra Mist. They own Propel, um, Sobe, and then Mug. They also own one. Um, they own Amp Energy. Um, Are you sure they own Life Water? Because it said Coke owns Life Water as well. Well, mine shows why Life Water too. Unless they. Who cares about any of the water ones? Am but I the, right? what, <laughs> what was water. big here was that Soda Stream. I can't believe you guys have never even heard of no. this. But that Soda Stream, I mean, I work at a store and we literally sell. Oh no, vitamin water is what Coke has. Sorry. We sell hundreds of these machines like a week, twice a really? week. Really? Yeah. Like it's you basically you put flavoring in this and you pump it and it makes Coke. Or it makes Pepsi. Or like whatever one you want. Yeah. Is it? Or it makes root beer. How have I not heard of this? I don't know. That's and crazy. then like you exchange these CO two canisters, fifteen bucks, and you get a whole new like thing of things. Dang. Which like they, that they're making crazy. a ton of money. Yeah. And these machines are hundred and fifty bucks each. Dang. So they're making a ton off of that. That is a big deal. All right. Well, let's go through here. We're going to go through a little bit of process of elimination here. because. So real quick, if we're erasing it from history, Coke at one point did own Dr. Pepper. But Dr. Okay, Pepper is not, now its own thing. You can't include Dr. Pepper because it's, it's, but it's erasing it from history. It's a state-by-state basis. Yeah. Coke owns Dr. Pepper and Pepsi owns Dr. Pepper, and depending on the place. Yeah, we're gonna eliminate Pepsi owns Dr. Dr. Pepper. Pe- from the Pepsi owns Dr. Pepper in Utah. Yeah, yeah okay. even history you wise, go out to Colorado. Coke owns it. Even history wise, we're gonna erase Dr. Pepper. We're gonna put it aside. It's not part of the conversation. We so get Dr. Pepper. Coca Cola. We, we, we all get Dr. Pepper. It. Yeah. 
Dr. Pepper stays. So, judging from what there is here on the list. Oh, dude. I want to start out by asking you guys, what is your favorite soda, period? My favorite soda is, that's the thing, Cherry Coke. Yep. Cherry Vanilla Pepsi. Cherry Vanilla Coke. Cherry Vanilla Coke, yeah. <laughs> wow, so you like Cherry Vanilla so Coke So, the only Pepsi problem, I love, I love both, really. Okay. But I, the problem I found, I've stopped drinking soda, and then I started drinking soda, and I came back to Coke... And it literally hurt to drink. Like it was, <laughs> it was so acidic. That's probably because it you is, had gone so long hard, without soda. But no, like that, I, I had Pepsi too, and it was fine. But it's because you had gotten used to soda after drinking the Coke. The one I, Coke. Well, here's the no. Here's what I will say. I have heard a lot of people do say Pepsi is a bit more watered down. Yeah. To where it's it's like less easier, intense. It's easier. It's and I feel intense. like you can actually taste the vanilla and cherry I don't in know, the dude. Pepsi. See, for more. me, cherry vanilla like, Coke is the god's gift to soda. When have you yeah. had cherry vanilla Pepsi though? I've had cherry vanilla Pepsi. I've had yeah, I've had cherry point. vanilla Pepsi in the bottle, and I'm not gonna lie, it's good. I'll be honest, but it is not cherry vanilla. I'll be Pepsi. honest, I don't hate Pepsi. Like I no, I'm fine. If but I have to have a Pepsi, if I'm somebody, not gonna be like, if somebody, I'm defending it to my <laughs> life. Look, if somebody set down two glasses, do I need to bring in, in the food? <laughs> Look, if somebody no, s- they own Lay's. To, to be honest, to be honest, if somebody sat down two glasses in front of me and one was Pepsi and one was Coke, I don't know if I could tell the difference. Yeah, and that's and that is. But true. I, I do like know I when I this know is something. I kind of want to do on the show. We do need to do that. That's like a these good kind idea. of competitions Just where it's like we get Pepsi and we get Coke and yeah. see which one. Oh, we should blindfold one of us and put like a certain food, like a chip, and like what, which one is this? Yeah, or, like, yeah. We should totally do that. That's a good idea. Okay. That should be a whole episode. Yeah, I that, like that. That sounds the dope. taste test. We episode. should and see That's if we next can tell. Let's do that next. That'd be fun. We should. We'll come Just over go and go get a bunch <laughs> of let's, let's do that one, dude. Seriously. Um. Okay. What I want to do is let's go drink by drink, similar ones. Well, real fast. So. Cherry or cherry coke vanilla is cherry, my favorite. Cherry vanilla. Same coke. with you. And then Hastens is the Pepsi though. Pepsi. Which, I do have a, I do have yeah. a pl- so special place like in my heart. Cherry just, vanilla flavor. But I also just like plain coke. Honestly, like, I'm so glad that we're all in agreement about the cherry vanilla. The cherry vanilla. Oh, it's <laughs> so <laughs> good. <laughs> cherry vanilla right anything. Now. They could have cherry vanilla shies and it'd be so good. <laughs> yeah, cherry vanilla is awesome. <laughs> and cherry, like I love just cherry too. Yeah, it works. Yeah, but cherry vanilla is perfect. Um, oh. So things, so things get hard going into the sub. Things get hard <laughs> because if I, at first glance, we're gonna go through them here. But at first glance, I'm gonna be honest. The Pepsi secondary category sounds much more appealing to me. No, I I, I know what you're thinking though. But we have to do it drink by drink because you're looking at it and you don't see the ones that. Yeah, I'm I know. Yeah. So look. So let's go. Let's go do what you did. Okay. Start real quick. We're gonna go Gatorade and Powerade. Which one? Gatorade, Gatorade for me. See Powerade for me. Ah, that's see, so uh, weird. For Powerade's me, it's Powerade. Fine. See, that's the thing is there's a lot of Pepsi drinks I do like, but I love Gatorade. But something about Powerade is extra energizing. It feels so much more refreshing. Really? It's the extra sugar. But, yeah, <laughs> but that, that's what's weird. With Gatorade, it feels like it has more sugar. It feels like it's more sweet. I don't know. No, I see. I feel like Gatorade tastes more sweet. Like Because when I when I drink a Powerade, I feel more refreshed than I do with the Gatorade. I don't know. It, I do I, love Gatorade, though. See, I, like both. I like Powerade. I like Powerade too. But if I if somebody had a ga- offered me a Gatorade or a Powerade, I'd be like Gatorade. Now, of course, Powerade Light, I hate. I hate Powerade Light. I that's, hate not, the white... that's not what they're calling it, though. You know, Gatorade is Gatorade. You yeah. know, no, Gatorade. I'm not, I'm not counting any Gay- of the, uh, like diets, the diets or because if, if you're talking Diet Coke, Diet Pepsi, I don't like any of that. I don't like any. I don't like that aspartame. Diet taste. is yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, diet know. is terrible. Any of the Diet Cokes or Diet it sodas tastes like no antidepressant. Way. I'll just <laughs> I'll just freaking like drink water. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Want I'd rather diet, have water sure. than any diet. Co- yeah. Oh, for sure. Not even a question. Um, but that's excluding Coke Zero, because if I had the choice between um, the Pepsi Zero, I think it's called Pepsi Light, and Pepsi Coke Zero, Zero, Coke Zero is better, because Coke Zero is not it's not diet, and it's 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 tolerable. Because I remember when we used to get Coke Zero all the freaking time. It's basically it diet. Pretty good. It's made with the yeah. same stuff. Yeah, but it was it was tolerable. I would choose that over any sort of diet. Uh, well, I would too, but I don't like to be clear. I don't like any of the zeros diets. Any of that mumbo yeah. jumbo lights, like yeah, they throw it suck. All away. They but all suck. For me. the most part, for me, zero is the best of the diets. I, like, I, I would agree, anything. probably. Yeah. I mean, I'd have to taste them side by side, but I think so too. Okay, so I, I say the unanimous vote is Gatorade then, because I might have to shift mine to get. Even though I love Powerade, you guys well, know how and I love them so equally that it takes the. Well, edge. the thing is, at the end of the day, we can have our own. Except, of course, answer, of course, and I'll yeah. stay say Powerade, 
But now let's go to the next one, which is Dasani versus Aquafina. Dasani, I don't even know. What They're Aquafina so is. similar to me. I don't even remember. I don't like either of them. I like Arrowhead. I like Arrowhead too. But that, yeah, and that's because we've grown up with that. I feel like. What? Is, uh, what Arrowhead does Because I've heard. I've heard Arrowhead. But other Aquafina people think it's and Dasani. Yeah, that's what I have. Both that have too. that filtered flavor that I just I don't like. See, that's weird because I mean? people say that. Like, ask anybody who's out of state. They hate Arrowhead. Yeah, they I've actually heard that irony. too. It's funny. Yeah. Well, yeah, Arrowhead is, is Poland Spring in the East. Poland, is it really? Poland, that one that we had in New York, remember? Poland Water. Oh, Poland oh yeah, yeah, that weird one. That's what Arrowhead is over there. Huh. Yeah, I, remember, I don't really remember. I don't it, remember how it tastes at all. Here's the thing, though, is water's hard to, but I do admit, all water usually tastes the same, but Dasani it tastes weird. I disagree. I, I think like I like Arrowhead because it doesn't have that awful that, that's taste. what i'm saying that's what i'm saying is i feel like for me all water tastes the same but something about dasani tastes so weird it Dis- almost feels like it came out of a soda dasani pump. tastes more filtered yeah it feels like it's almost like a soda aquafina water. tastes the same yeah and uh, these ones that are like these premium waters like aquafina is the smart waters and all this stuff they taste filtered that's yeah. why i don't like yeah. them i mean i like i also drink them but I don't, well, with sure. water for me is I'm just like whatever yeah, I'll drink water. whatever water it is but if i had the Unless choice between like an arrowhead and a dasani i'd probably choose an arrowhead if we're we should do that. Up. We should do types of water. Too. Ooh, let's see if we can notice. See if we can tell the difference between the waters. I can definitely tell Dasani. I know for a fact I can tell Dasani. There's know. something about Dasani. I so Rhett and Link, Rhett and Link do this a lot. Yeah, they, they do. They, they, they do, do they, these taste tests. And they're like, can you tell this? And they like never know. Like they're really? almost always wrong. <laughs> Except for like fast food. Like uh, Rhett's like a freaking genius. No, because I remember he did <laughs> specifically a taco one, and he missed all of them. And he was so confident. He's like, this is 100 percent Chipotle. I've eaten Chipotle a million times, and it was like Taco Bell. <laughs> and so I'm really interested in doing that and see if we can actually yeah, tell. Yeah, that would be really fun. Uh, if I had to go between Aquafina and Dasani, it would be Dasani, just because Dasani. I know had it more. more. I know. Dasani. I agree. So, I, I don't know which Dasani. one owns Aquafina. Dasani. Coke or Coke. Pepsi? Coke owns Dasani. Coke. Okay. So okay, that's so two, how about two for Coke for me, one for Pepsi? Now how about their primary, secondary? So their main Mountain secondary. Dew and Mountain Dew versus Sprite. Sprite? So Mountain Dew and Sprite are the two this second. Is, this is really tough. This is really tough for me because this is I, I, sta- I stand ones. by this. I think Sprite is the most underrated soda. Oh yeah, it's like, so freaking. I feel good. like it's so easy to forget about Sprite. Well, when you look at it, for some reason, I think it's because it looks so similar to water or bubbly that I feel like it's gonna taste different than it does. Yeah. Because I had it literally today, like because they I had like a school thing and they brought like bagels and then they had like. Sprite, and I wasn't expecting so much, and I was like, "Frick, it is so good." Sprite is really, it good. is so good. But but Mountain Dew, Mountain Dew Sorry, is like freaking amazing. Mountain Dew is the pick for I me. I gotta pick Mountain Dew. Yeah. I I have to pick. Mountain I just Dew. wanted to give a shout out to Sprite because like I really do like. And here's Sprite the thing. Too. Here's the thing. The only reason Mountain Dew takes the edge for me is because I love them both equally in different ways. They taste different, but Mountain Dew has Code Red. Orange yeah. taste, blue voltage. one, voltage, uh, Baja voltage Blast, so black, whatever. Yeah, oh. it's not even close. It's not even close. Oh, I will say this though, because like you know the, the different has? types of sprites aren't very good. No, sprite like has cranberry, cranberry sprite. sprite yeah. which is really you want good. sprite cranberry? No, you want sprite cranberry? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sprite cranberry is good, but you want sprite cranberry? compared to <laughs> compared to the because like sprite cranberry for me, it tastes too similar to sprite. It's not as good as Mountain Dew. Yeah, yeah it's because not. Mountain Dew. The other types of Mountain Dew taste completely different than normal Mountain Dew. Yeah. Like Baja Blast tastes completely different than Code Black or Code Red. Code Black. There's the black one. What is yeah, it? Black, it's, uh, black Jet. Jet Black. Blackout. <laughs> blackout. Yeah. I don't think that's it. But um, um, So should we do Root Beer? Hold on. Hold on. Oh. Hold on. We have to tally up real quick. <laughs> I, I, okay. So, so I have I'm one. Two, for, I'm two it's Pepsi, two Literally, Coke. it's 2-2 two, two right now. If you for me. go as a group, like deciding. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Because I picked Coke. Dasani, Mountain, Mountain Dew, Dew, and Powerade. So I have three Coke and one Pepsi. And me and Hasten are two, too. Yeah. Well, for my water, I didn't pick either. Oh, well, if you had to pick one. If I had to, I, yeah. I hate both of them. Well, you have to pick one. <laughs> Which one do you know more than? Because that's the it only reason I picked Dasani. Right? It's because the only one Aqua, I knew more. Well, I, I work in like a retail. I know all of them. I work, yeah. I work I know, around them every day. drink more? Neither. <laughs> Aquafina, I guess. Wow, okay, so you're actually three Pepsi, one Coke. Yeah. All right, so what, which one wow. did you say so now? So I'm in the minority right now with 2-2, two, two, so. So you're the neutral. Root beer now. Root beer, this, this is a tough one. This is one. really tough. That's a crazy part really is tough. I'm going about to go four to one because I choose mug. Really? Yeah. How do you choose mug, though? Because I like I like mug, but I have not had it nearly as much as the one 
At here's here's the thing. Coconuts. Mug is more smooth than Barks. It is. It's way more smooth, but Barks, Barks is, is, is nostalgic is, all is the super way. Nostalgic. That's just because you it's guys like had grandma. Grandma. I know, I know. But You did too. So hard. Remember even it the is for red. Me too, remember like, the red Barks too. Yeah. Oh. Red but every. But I felt. I always felt like when I got Mug, that's the good stuff. Mug is like good. Me, I'm not so gonna lie. Mug, mug is, is good. good. Mug reminds me of Halloween because they always had those mini the mug yeah, ones. Yeah, mini mugs. Oh. To be fair, the best root beer though is A and W. A and W. Yeah. A and W is 100 percent hands down the best root beer. And like the KFC one. I'm not talking like the two liter. I'm talking when you go to KFC and have their A and W root beer. That's oh, the best. Oh my gosh! Yeah. So, it's tough. I, man, this one's really hard for me. Barks is owned by Coke, right? And Mug is Pepsi. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Hasten, you're going Mug. Yep. All the way. Does Mug have any sub flavors? No. Like Cherry Mug? <laughs> I doubt. Well, if, even if it does, we haven't heard of them. That proves that they're not. Oh, popular. you know who makes yeah. A&W? Dr. Pepper brand. Really? Yep. Okay. Well, so, if only Dr. Pepper was a part of the running, because I might choose it at this point. We could we could throw in Dr. Nah, Pepper if we wanted to. <laughs> it would lose because it doesn't have a. It doesn't have. Well, you know spray. what makes Dr. Pepper? Yeah. Keurig. Oh, what the heck? Really? <laughs> so weird. You, these are That's things you crazy. just never. Think Dr. About. Pepper also makes Seven Up, which Seven Up is just like Sprite. Dr. Pepper does. Mm-hmm. Does uh, Does Pepsi have like a Sprite knockoff? Because Mountain Dew it isn't Sierra Mist. Sierra Mist, okay. Which that is the worst of them. It's I'm the same saying. thing. It's no, lemon. Sierra Mist. I don't not. know Sierra Mist. Like I don't know the taste of it. It's really. lemon lime, like soda. <laughs> it's right. It's Sierra Mist. But <laughs> Sprite is Sprite's the better, best. Though. It got. There's the reason. Yeah. Sierra Mist is fine. Um. Uh, this is tough. Okay, right. so what did we decide? So Hazen Mug, Tanner, what are you going? Mug or Barks? I'm going Barks. Because it's Barks. Pure, pure nostalgia, honestly. Like, even if Mug tastes better, it, it, Mug is smoother. I will say that, yeah. M- M- Barks is very intense. It's, it's intense. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Barks. You're like, oh. It's in the name, Barks. Like, you can just, it's like, it's funny, I just thought about it. Barks and Mug, and on Mug, it's the bulldog. And it's like <laughs> Barks. Bark. <laughs> Here's the thing, too. Is just looking at the Barks thing with like the barrel. It's super nostalgic. And nostalgic, but I know what I. I know I'm the tasting. taste. I know it without even. Yeah, I can I, taste it I right taste now, it. but I can't taste mug. I know mug. I we should do mug. a comparison. No, because like, when I think of you know mug, how I think we would of know all of this definitively is if we had them and just oh tried them on. Yeah, like just Dude, taste tried them, them on. Now, barks and mug, I would be able to tell the difference. Oh yeah, 100%. that one I'm almost confident on. But I, but A and W and mug are so similar for me. A and W would win, but it yeah they, I, I would have a harder smooth. time. They're both smooth root beer. Yeah, Barks is so rough. Different. Yeah, it's, it's like it's very different. Beer. It's good though. It's rough. It reminds me of the one out of the bottle that we get the with the old man on it. Oh yeah. It rem- it's right. very similar to that where it's more like bzzz, like sarsaparilla. It's like and manly. It's like root beer. sarsaparilla instead of root beer. <laughs> yeah, I would have to. I'm going to go Barks just because of nostalgia, but I think taste-wise, honestly, Mug might be better. It might be, yeah. But Barks, I got to go. But it's hard. I don't think I would ever be able to know how much better Mug is because of the nostalgia. Nostalgia just blinds my taste. Yeah. Like, I'd be like, oh, Mug. So I'm three Coke, two Pepsi right now. I am four Coke, one Pepsi. Four Pepsi, one Coke. You're four Coke? Mm -hmm. What's the only Pepsi? The one Pepsi was Mountain Dew. We all you guys we chose Mountain Dew. Okay. So I'm three to two. Okay. All right. All right. Real quick. I wish we brought Dr. Pepper and Throning because Dr. Pepper also owns Crush. Oh, huh. Which I didn't realize how much Dr. Pepper owns. Yeah. We'll we'll save Dr. Pepper versus something else later on. (laughs) Like uh, uh, RC Cola. (laughs) Now, Now we can do orange juice. There's Tropicana, which is owned by Pepsi, and then there's Simply Orange, which is owned by Coke. Simply Orange is that looking one. Okay, which and one's then Tropicana? Tropicana is that one. They look so similar. Okay, I think I'm Tropicana. I, I am re- too. Yeah, I recognize the Tropicana one more. I am too. Okay. Simply Orange is really good too, though. Simply, they're I've had so Simply similar. Orange, and they're really good. Yeah. But I think I choose Tropicana. Tropicana yeah. is sweeter, which I like because Simply Orange is in the name. It's literally actual orange juice. And that one's orange juice, it's but a little like, sweeter. It's more like, uh, what do you call it, Sunny D. Yeah, it's more like Sunny D. And it, it's it's just nicer to drink. So I'm I'm all tied up right now, then. I'm 3-3. Three, three. I am 4 Coke, 2 Pepsi. 5-1. Oh, 
Jeez, <laughs> Payson's a Pepsi boy. Apparently. Um, I didn't think I was this much. I knew <laughs> like, like my primary one was Pepsi. Like Coke does have a Mountain Dew counterpart, which is called Surge, which was actually discontinued in the 90s and then brought back. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's back now. Look, at this. Yeah, we're not... I don't know what the freak that is, so we okay. can't... We can't um, do ones we don't know. Now, do teas? Teas, yeah. Or juices. Like, they're juice... Not yeah. like orange juice, but what, like what juices? juices. Do What's they the have? juice? Um, naked. Naked Minute Maid. Oh, Minute Maid. Minute is Maid is huge. All the way. They have they're oh. huge, but I don't think you guys have tasted naked. No, I, have, no, I, have. I have. It's, no, it's very. Good. I have. I have. I have. <laughs> it is good. Oh, it's, it's so a, good. But it's a different. <laughs> it's literally it's, just fruit. It's like blended naked. Up. Look, <laughs> it's different juice. Look, the, uh, Minute Maid is very specifically. You know I what type of juice? Next time you go to the store. Get naked. To buy naked. <laughs> buy naked. They're two fifty. No, it's... So. Hey, you urge me to go hey, to the store and get naked? Yes. I, ad- okay. <laughs> I admit. But the... Naked are, are like creamy. They're premium juices that are so much better. They're like almost creamy in a way. They're like a smoothie that's been melted and then it's a drink. It's they're good. They're healthy for you, They're too. good. Yeah, they're good. I like... I but... Want, the thing is with Minute Maid, is it sour? And sometimes I like the sour. Yeah. I hate no, Minute Maid. No. Minute Maid, really? there's... I hate Minute Maid. Minute Maid, there's I won't, lemonade. I, I, like, if they have Minute Maid lemonade, I try not to drink it. Wow! No, of they how have bad it is. they have Minute Maid lemonade, the pink lemonade. They have the the lemon lime one. They have the one that Dad used to always get the pomegranate one. Remember? Yeah. That's in Operation M. Yeah, yeah. I'm Minute Maid. I'm all Minute the way. Maid too. Just because, and to be fair, I haven't. I've had naked at some point in my life, but I haven't had it any. Minute Maid. I drink the crap out so of. I recommend I for you. I got mighty, naked at one point. In my mighty life. mango. Mighty mango naked. Naked juice. Okay, so next time I next go to time the store, you go to a store, we'll just buy it. You're gonna love it. I promise. I'll get it. And you will, you will change your mind, so this is the tiebreaker. <laughs> so now I am... So I'm four Coke, five, Pepsi. I'm five Coke, two Pepsi. Okay. Teas? Teas. Now, Coke has two separate teas. Which one should I do? do I have two separate. Bigger. I have two separate okay, as well. Okay, obviously, Gold Peak is better than... Is more known than Honest Tea. I don't They're know. They're about equal. I feel like Gold Peak is more... But more. I have Brisk and Lipton. <laughs> See, the thing is, I don't, I don't know brisk, and I don't even really care about tea. But I know brisk. Brisk is amazing. Like, brisk is really good tea. That is true. Also, I, Lipton is good too if you like like their green tea. Lipton, I, I did try Lipton when Grandpa had it, and it's good. But brisk it's is definitely, very sugary. Oh my! Brisk gosh. is definitely the best tea. I admit, yeah, I agree. I don't like tea, but I would go brisk just because that's what I. And know. brisk had, had a You're specific four one. four. I'm four. F- I'm all tied up. Four I'm three. I'm going brisk too, so I'm five three. I'm, whatever it is, one. So what did you go with? <laughs> brisk. You went with brisk. So you're seven one, Hasten. Yeah. <laughs> Hasten. So Hasten is all Pepsi. I'm the neutral, and Tanner's mostly, mostly Coke. But I'm five three. I'm close to neutral. I'm one point uh, yeah. away from being neutral. Yeah. All yeah. right. Um, now say what you have left. Because I don't think we have anything else we can. There's compare, nothing compared wise. But there's yeah. some stuff that we can Mellow say. Mellow yellow. Is Mellow Yellow? Mellow Yellow is owned by Coke. I know. Is there anything in comparison for Pepsi? It's um, very similar to Mountain Dew. I have Sobe. No, I don't think I have anything compared. Hold on, sorry. I clicked out of it real quick. I have Eyes Eze. Hmm. Okay, do you have any sort of orange drink-like crush? And what about no. Fresca? Because, no. Fresca's owned by Coke. Yeah, but f- also Fanta. Mm-mm. Fanta and Fresca, I don't even remember the difference. So the only ones no, they're I have both that, owned are, by Coke, that are big oh. that are left are Sobe, Propel. Oh. Um, See, Sobe is vitamin water. Vitamin water, it has Coke has vitamin No, we're going to do so. I say we do Sobe versus Fresca. And even though they're not comparable, we need to have Sobe. I would choose Sobe. Because I've two. never even had Fresca. Yes, you have. Remember, Dad, I know, but we, I don't. I hated Fresca. You hated Fresca. Like that weird. Uh, I don't know. I do not like Fresca. No, I don't think you remember. What I Fresca remember Fresca. Is, I remember Fresca. Fresca. Oh, energy drink. Do you have an energy drink? It says Monster. Oh well, Monster's gonna win because I have Amp. Oh wait, so energy. Oh, there's energy drinks. Yeah. So it's Amp versus Monster. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, hold let's on. do that. I have I to make sure. Because it, it might be just sponsored again. I can't remember which one owns what. I know. Let's see. I'll just type it in. Who owns Monster? Coca-Cola. Okay. Yeah, it's Coke. What? Amp? Uh, no. Monster is owned by Coke. Or Co- Coke owns Monster. Okay. Who owns Amp? Obviously, Monster runs. 
Well, I mean, we're going to see if they even know. Oh, Pepsi does. Okay. So Monster wins that one because we've tried Monster. Yeah. I, I once again, don't like energy drinks either. So I think I, I've had Monster. That's the only one I've had. So it Frick, so good. now I'm 6'3". So I'm 5'4". Five, 5'4", four. Five, four, Coke. So I, we need to find one more to end it on. This is going to be the last one because I think there's too many now to have comparisons. I say Sobe for Pepsi versus something Coke has. But Coke doesn't have something uh, Or similar. I have Propel. Propel's good, too, if you have, like, a sparkling water. I think vitamin water is the most cl- close to Sobe, in my opinion. Yeah. I, I don't even know vitamin, vitamin water, water is. is very Vitamin similar. water is really Connor, good. that's vitamin water. Vitamin water is really oh. good. I have the, There's the pomegranate one that I always yeah. get. Okay. Dragon fruit. It's really no, good. No, I choose yeah. Sobe, though, over those two. I'm I Sobe would too. I would choose Sobe, too. Wow. So, so I'm 6'4". I'm tied up. 5'5". Five, five. I end on it. I'm 6'4". <laughs> Wait, so we got to add them all up now. I am 8-2. I'm 6-4. Well, overall, Pepsi would win. Because yep. 8 four. plus 5 is 13, plus 4 is 17. And then Coke would be Six. 1, 4, 5. I'm 2. 11. 12, because I'm 2. Okay, so 12 to 17. So Pepsi would win if it was the overall. The overall winner between us three, if you were to split it, Pepsi. would be Pepsi. Pepsi wins, which but is crazy. personal winner... Pepsi, Pepsi winner would be Pepsi. I neutral, have to decide. And Coke. Coke. I would go Coke. I would have to go Coke. Purely because, because of Coke. Because cherry. of Coke, cherry, Coke, vanilla. And I'm so close anyway that I'd have to go Coke. I gotta change his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, dude. You could. That's the thing is like Mountain Dew and Mug. It's a tough one. It's not close. I mean, it's way close. You know, it's you're going to change your mind once you taste that uh, naked juice. I, I could change my mind. That if naked we, if, juice. When we do our taste test episode, I could change my mind. Who knows? Connor, I know how you can pick, actually. What? You can look at the restaurants that they serve in and pick which ones you like better. <laughs> what restaurants? Well, they'd like all just now. switch over to the other one. Coke, yeah. Coke has that soda machine, the one that they use. I do in. like Coke soda And machine. Pepsi does not have that. This well, awesome oh, soda machine Coke, where you're like... <laughs> does Coke own High C or is High C its own thing? Uh, High C is its own thing. thing. Okay. Because it's at a lot of the Coke machines, but... Yeah, I think it's like Dr. Pepper and it's just mixed. Hmm. Well, it's sold at the High C is McDonald's. So oh, yeah, here we can McDonald's figure it out. Does those ones. Yeah. Who owns Icy? Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Not Icy. Who owns Icy? Who owns High C? Well, there you have it, folks. Uh, Pepsi. Oh, is our... oh. Coke. Coke. Coke owns it. Well, that's another reason for me to give it to Coke. Oh. So, so Pepsi wins our overall death match, and then individually, Hayson picked Pepsi, and then Taryn and I picked Coke. Uh, let us know what you would pick. Who would you keep in a race from history? That's the thing we had to remember. I keep forgetting we're racing the other one from history. We're racing Mountain Dew. <laughs> so, yeah, Mountain Dew. Oh my gosh, that makes it harder. But, but that's only the that's the biggest one I'm I'm missing out on. Otherwise, like I can do without Mug because I've got Barks and I've got A and W. Yeah, yeah. I, I can do sure. without. I don't Sobe. know, dude. I don't know if I could do. Without I could do without all of. Because of, True. Uh, for like we don't four even years, drink for soda. five yeah. years. I, I don't just drink, drink soda, so it's like <laughs> I've, I've had like I've done without. Them I've for probably years, had so. like three sodas in the past six years, you know, like in total, adding them up when I've had like one. Yeah, the but only when one I used I've to really drink. had is cherry, Coke or Pepsi. You had yeah, a root beer one, Pepsi. I do drink. I I mean I did drink a ton of soda though as a kid. So it's yeah, like, and we all did. So that's where it really mattered, but. uh yeah, we want to know what you guys would pick. Let us know uh, if you're a Pepsi or a Coke person. And uh, let I, us know what other deathmatch you'd like us to see you do in the future. Real quick, I do like Pepsi commercials better than Coke. Because Coke's got the really cool polar bear oh, ones. Oh, but the, and then the, I wish I had that Pepsi. <laughs> I don't remember that. This, it was the brand the, new one. The new one with Michael. Oh, God. With, uh, with Cardi with B Michael and Scott. Michael Scott. Where he's like... Pepsi is more than okay. Just okay. Okay, it's got little John. Oh, I didn't really like. Is Pepsi that okay? So Pepsi okay. Pepsi's more than okay. And then Cardi B comes through the door. She's like, okay. And then it, and then little John at the end is like, okay. I didn't really like that commercial. But then I mean, Cokes are nice because it's the polar bear. But I, mean, I actually like the Coke ones better because, especially before movies and movie theaters, they have the one where it's glass pours down and then all like, oh, like, over as you see oh. the soda pour over the ice. It's like. It makes me want to you hear it, you hear it fizz, and you're like, oh my god! And then also, oh, the, yeah. the Coke store with the polar bear and all the different tries and the merchandise. Dude, they, I tell you what, before a movie theater, or a movie when they do that, 
It is so appealing. Like, oh my there, gosh. I don't think there's a commercial that's more seductive to me than that commercial. Than that. I know. <laughs> e- even the commercials with like the hot girls you know eating the I mean? burger, nothing is more seductive no, than yeah, that, that freaking thing that with the coke. It pours and it fizzes and then you just hear like it, the ice rise up. And then, and then it zooms the out and it shows the drink and it's like, drink refreshed or something. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> I'm like right there. <gasps> and I feel like I'm parched now and I'm like, frick. Yeah, it is so good. They, coke kills it with those. Um, even the popcorn one where it's like, I know. Oh, I want to go watch a movie. <laughs> anyway, um, we thank you guys for joining us on this episode today. Uh, episode eleven. Episode eleven. Yeah, yeah, we're going in through the double going digits along. now. That's what. That's that's uh, two hours. One hundred and ten hours. Yeah, two hours per episode. We already have. If, if, if we if we average two hours an episode, then we're at we're like about twenty something hours. We're about forty hours of content now, so that's crazy. Yeah. Well, if we have eleven episodes, I mean, if you count our super our smash smash cast, cast too. Yeah, you're probably right then. Probably around 40-something hours. Speaking of Smashcast, go check those out. They're a limited-run podcast, but uh, hopefully here in the future with DLC characters, we'll be doing some more. We should be um, ha- we'll have one really soon, actually, because the April update will be coming soon. I just realized we didn't talk about Apex Legends again. I wanted to talk no! about it. No! <laughs> it's okay. We're going to play it tonight. Well, no, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about it when the new update comes out for March. Yeah, yeah March 1st. Because we've been playing the heck out of Apex. Uh, it's a lot of fun. We'll I want to actually win. have a conversation We're going to go get about, our win tonight. Yeah, we've, we've been struggling the last couple nights. But I, I want to have a, uh, a discussion about like the actual gameplay of it and stuff. Because we oh, yeah. mentioned it last week with the free-to-play stuff, but not really talked about the game itself. So uh, look forward to that. Um, if you're playing Apex, let us know. You know, give us who's a your comment. main. We'll, we'll freaking team up with you guys, maybe. Um, and we'll we have our squad, but if <laughs> one of us isn't playing at the time. Um, anyway, yeah, like, share, subscribe. Let people know uh, about our videos. We'd love to um, get out there a bit more. If you guys are willing to um, spread the word, we'd really appreciate that. Follow us on social media, of course, at Super uh, Bros Videos on Twitter and then at Super Basement Bros on Instagram. Yep. Um, guys, let us know your mains for Apex Legends. Let us know if you picked Coca Cola or uh, Pepsi. <laughs> I was like, Coca Cola is not a character. In yeah. Apex hey, do Legends. you like Coca Cola from Apex Legends? Um, <laughs> let Evermore us, Park. Yeah, let us know how you feel up. about Evermore, yeah. guys. I mean, hit us up if you want our ideas. <laughs> Don't you dare stop. Oh, yeah. Freaking Evermore, Evermore creator, I swear. <laughs> I swear to God, if you take an RFID system next please, year. Please, but actually, yeah, please if, be you, nice. if you implement those systems, I'd be very happy now. I would I'd be go. too, like, honestly. That'd I'd be awesome. awesome. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Evermore Park is awesome. Uh, go check it out. Uh, subscribe to their social media and follow them. We we want it to get big too because it's an actual park for near us. Real. So uh, only boost our economy. (laughs) So uh, check out Evermore Park. Um, Yeah, like, share, subscribe, and uh, also CTH Films, our short film uh, production company. We have a short film coming out in the next few weeks called uh, "It's the Package 3 um, If you look pending, yeah, we actually have two uh, other package movies. There's two other ones before that. You can check them out on Vimeo or YouTube. Um, so check those out if you guys have the chance. Along Follows with a lot of our other movies that we've made. Ton, yeah. yeah there's we have a ton of short probably films. Probably made... We have probably ten or 12. Over, oh, over yeah. 10. Yeah. We're over 10 for sure. Um, yeah, if you... Uh, what was I going to say? Frick. Oh, social media. Super, I, at Super Bros Videos I on actually Twitter. Picked that oh, up did you? At the end here? Ago. Yeah. Okay, cool. But, um... Yeah, guys, and please send us a duster because Connor needs to dust this really bad. <laughs> oh it is really dusty. All my collectibles just sit on my shelves. And, uh, oh, I'm pretty also, sure that's been sitting there for If you guys years. want uh, to have an episode where I just show you guys, and Hayson shows us, we just show you guys all of our collectibles. He can show you his pop figures, <laughs> Amiibos, my Skylanders. Now, this is going to be tough because we're going to have to record separately. Oh, you know what would be cool <laughs> is if we should, uh, if you guys are interested in this, Hayson collects pop figures and I collect like Amiibo and stuff like that. Taren collects Skylanders and a bunch of other things too, little other things. But uh, if you guys want to see like unboxing stuff, you know, let us know. Maybe we can uh, do stuff like that. And as, getting new things. As stupid yeah. as it sounds, like, and as nerdy and, and kiddish, I do have duplicates of Skylanders that I would be willing to give away. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, I'm sure we do, too. Like, if you guys are super interested and you <laughs> subscribe <laughs> and stuff. I actually do have some pop figures I don't if, really want. If we actually exactly. had... I would, I would straight up do that. Like, If, if we had a returning audience, then yeah, maybe it, I'd consider it. No, yeah, I would, I would consider doing that. But, anyway. But, yeah, uh... You hear that? We might do a giveaway if uh, you guys uh, watch our the videos. The two people <laughs> watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, there, I want it. Okay, you'll get it. <laughs> Be the first one to comment and you'll get it. <laughs> whoever, you'll get a free pop Whoever figure. subscribes, comments, likes, shares first gets a free spot. Our next <laughs> subscriber gets $10 million. <laughs> It'll be at your door tomorrow next night. Next subscriber gets a George Bluff. 
pop figure. <laughs> <laughs> Gets uh, the one guy from Tomorrowland who. Yeah, there was, like, a toy. no, I gave him away. I don't oh, have yeah, him anymore. Right, right, and then you actually just send him like a, a printout of the, <laughs> the pop yeah. picture. It's like I gave you what He's I. He's like, what congratulations. The? It says in the description that it's just a picture. Winner gets this. No, yeah. <laughs> it's mine. Winner does not get this. <laughs> That's probably really rare now. Actually, it's not too rare, but it's, it's got cool. the uh, art book. Yeah, I do love it. I'm a big fan of the Arkham games. It's classic. Um, this, All right, we're gonna end yeah, the episode. <laughs> we're, gonna end we're gonna start talking about the uh, girl twerking in 720 degrees. Again. Oh yeah. <laughs> anyway, we thank you guys for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.